Well, ho, 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 everybody. It's that time of year again. Yes. <laughs> we sent Paul and Mary Jo home with their eggnog. And it's just you and me and the best of Windows Weekly for 2020. All this year, Windows Weekly has come to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. Securing every access point in your company does not have to be a challenge. LastPass unifies access and authentication to make securing your employees simple and secure, even when they're working remotely. Check out lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. And thanks, LastPass. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therott and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 704 for December 23rd, 2020. The best of 2020. Hello, everybody. Leo Laporte here. A very special, I look forward to these all year, end of the year Windows Weekly best of. We've been compiling clips uh, thanks to Karsten Bondi and Micah Sargent who've been knocking heads trying to figure out what the best clips are. Thanks to our editors, Kevin and Anthony and John and Victor who put all this together. Uh, here, without further ado, some of the most uh, interesting moments of uh, 2020. One that's really kind of resonated all year long is the end of Windows 7. The end of the line for Windows 7. It's uh, endings and new beginnings. Yep. It's actually <laughs> a lucky thing that they had that last patch Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Oh, Why? but wait, they didn't fix the crypto bug right. on Windows right. 7. Oh, yeah. oh, wait. Well, what are they going to do? It's almost like they invented a zero day just to prevent, you know, to get people <laughs> to upgrade, you know, on day one or something. I, but did, I hope it, is, So I, I know very little about this, but didn't Windows 7 not need that no, patch? all versions of Windows needed that patch. I saw Windows 10, Windows Server 2016, yep. and 2019, the and that was it. It was in Crypt32 DLL, which is in all versions of Windows. It's what's used to sign certificates, and the threat, okay, one of the... One of the threats is that uh, you could f forge a certificate. So you could say, yeah, actually, he, yeah, I just wrote Windows, Microsoft Word. Here, have a copy. And it could be I signed. Do, I need to forge a certificate for my app. Um, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so this was an important patch. In fact, it was the NSA that discovered right. it. Yeah. Told, yep. told, I think they told Microsoft, I hope they told Microsoft months ago. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. They'll yeah, probably then, screw around in that back door that they, everyone knows they have. And um, <laughs> <laughs> I Don't new, start that rumor I again. A new, no, I learned a new term <laughs> called NOBUS. NOBUS? And this is a NOBUS, N-O-B-U-S. It's, it's an acronym oh, or a kind of a, not an acronym, it's a squishonym that uh, the NSA uses for an exploit that's so hard to take advantage of that nobody but us can oh. use it. And they don't patch, they don't tell people about Nobus. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, Michael Hayden, the former head of the uh, NSA, said, look, if it's going to take four acres of supercomputers to, you know, take advantage of this exploit, we don't bother getting it fixed. We, it's good for us. Because <laughs> we got four acres of supercomputers. Yeah, a yeah, few companies have that scale of uh, So there's this doctrine of car. no bus flaws. This was mm -hmm. not a no bus flaw. This is a... Mm -hmm. Kind of a serious okay. issue, which is patched in ten, right? But yep. Well, I mean, if uh, th there's no excuse not to patch it in seven if it is vulnerable, right. and also eight exactly. one, right? Uh, they should yep. be patching every. I'll have to look at the NSA bulletin, but I think that I, my memory is they said it would be in all versions of Windows, and because mm -hmm. it's Crypt thirty two DLL, right. which I think everybody, every all the crypto processes, including BitLocker and certificates. Use. So it, when when we started our day yesterday, knowing it was the last day, Windows 7 would get patches. When I heard, there were a lot of rumors going around about NSA press conference and this and that. And I'm like, oh man, are you kidding? The, like, the is there going to be something? Right? Yeah. Is there going to be something where they say, yep. okay, we're patching Windows 7 one last time and this is why you need to upgrade, right? That, that was my guess of how, if that was yep, what it too. was, they would have positioned it, right? So uh, Brian Krebs said that they, w what happened it was revealed to Microsoft. Microsoft fixed it. They quietly shipped fixes to the military yeah. okay. and other high-value customers and targets that manage key internet infrastructure. And then they, and that's, uh, that's what 
kept anybody from saying anything until January 14th when it was, you know, Patch Tuesday yesterday when it was patched. Surprise Google else. to just reveal it 120 days ago like they usually do. <laughs> Google has, by the way, settled on 90 days. They said it's going to be 90, 90 days. days yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So yeah. Crypt32 DLL was introduced into Windows 20 years ago in NT4.0. <laughs> <laughs> XP <laughs> is vulnerable. Uh, sure. 7 is vulnerable. Wow. Well, according to Krebs. So okay, well, but it stands true. to reason they would patch it then, even though yeah. Windows, because Windows exactly. 7 is still going to be in use. That's what I would say, too. Well, wait a minute now. According to the NSA, the problem exists in Windows 10 and Windows Server 2016, which was patched. Okay. Um, it's Krebs possible this component was updated over time, right? So that would explain mm. Yeah. Mm. why older versions don't need it. Microsoft says no active exploitations have been seen to date. Mm -hmm. uh, it's unclear. It's unclear. I mean... It would be suicide for them not to have patch seven with yeah. this. If it, right? That 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 yep. wouldn't even make sense. No, <laughs> it would be like crazy because yesterday was the last patch. Yeah, it's like for right. seven, bye bye, right? and oh hey, we left well, a we little something yeah, for sorry. you. <laughs> Here's a little uh, Windows 10 upgrade offer you might want to take advantage of. <laughs> no, and you know what? If they hadn't done that. And everybody yeah. knew this was the last day. Don't you think there'd be this gigantic outcry? Well, I, look, like, I, we have to right? kind of describe it this way because it is the last day officially, but Microsoft patched XP a couple of times. Um, right. They will, of well, course, do it. If this was point. some rampant internet yeah. attack, of course they would uh, ship a patch. So that's why I'm yeah. keeping that Windows 7 thing going. I can't wait is to see why? the next update. <laughs> see what happens, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I think it must be that it only affects because it's using it's a it's a flaw in the ECC the elliptic curve crypto. So maybe those earlier versions of Windows didn't even that's a have that yeah right. have, it's a relatively yeah. new. Um, that's my guess. Just my uneducated guess. Yeah, Left has to be Steve Gibson. Did you say educated? <laughs> Edu you said? I said Edu uneducated. <laughs> you mean creducated? Creducated. Nice. We're gonna drop a creducation bomb. <laughs> I'm looking at the Microsoft CVE entry, and it does not mention any other versions of Windows. They just yeah. mention the patches, okay. but they don't say it doesn't affect. They don't say what it affects one way or the other. It so. would be incredibly well, irresponsible to patch one version of Windows, <laughs> right? I mean, because, I, that makes more because sense because. There's still like 30% of Windows users, 25, 30% yep. using Windows 7, including some of the biggest enterprises, right? And then yep. they don't patch it. And it doesn't matter how you count. That's hundreds <laughs> of millions of people. I mean, right. no matter, yeah. you know, no matter what the number is. Yeah. 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 It, it, they don't say ex explicitly it only affects these versions, but that's all they patched. And they don't mm. imply that it affected any other versions. Yeah. So right. if you really want to know something, ask Edward Snowden. <laughs> <laughs> we'll call him up. We're getting to the point where his information's a little out of date. He's though, out of date now. Yeah, he's only. Yeah. <laughs> I just uh, I know what Putin tells. Like me. asking That's Wozniak for some information <laughs> about like Mac internals. It's like I, you know. Oh gosh. I don't know. I hope it's patched. <laughs> um, as far as we know, the upgrade, the free upgrade, continues, right? Yeah. <clears throat> yep. Today yes. is the silence. Day. No one's talking about it. Free upgrade that right. everyone can use. Yeah. <laughs> uh, today's the day that you'll see a big pop-up on your Windows 7 machine saying... Yep, I saw it this morning. Did you? Beautiful. You did? Yep. Yeah. Yep. So only on non-domain joined and machines in... Uh, uh, actually, I could be... Is right? that... Are you sure about that? They told me that. They said it will not appear on domain joined machines or machines I in kiosk it, mode. Kiosk mode, okay. I, I think it might appear on domain joined machines mm -hmm. that aren't part of that extended service program. Mm -hmm. But I, where did I see that? They told me no, but yeah. Do you right. hear from anybody who says, I, I just love Windows 7, I'm not going to move to 10? Yeah, um, I'm yes. one of those people, Leo, <laughs> and I got to say. <laughs> no. um, well, you know who used to say that? Steve Gibson, and he I even has, has bowed to the inevitable. He upgraded. Well, yeah. So for the past two or three weeks, I've been using Windows 7, and I love it. And I have to say... <laughs> This is the last version of Windows that was created before any of the mobile nonsense, yep, yep. and it, it, it has a, a purity to it that I really appreciate. Um, it reminds me of the Mac in some ways in that it's 
kind of a minimalist system and there's not a bunch of junk in your face, yeah. whatever. Yeah. I always said it was the best version of Windows they ever Yeah, had. yeah. the most popular, uh, I would say, so far. Um, but, you know, it's irresponsible to think that you're going to run this thing over a period of time. Um, and I understand wanting to. I, that I completely understand. Yeah. Um, Windows 7 users have not been served by any meaningful feature updates ever. You know, um, there was one service pack that came out in 2011 that didn't really have much in the way of features. And that was kind of the end of that. But let's face it, this NSA thing or whatever, there's going to be a zero day. There are hundreds of millions of people using this thing. It is absolutely going to be a target. And so you can yeah. do um, yourself a favor by using a modern browser that will help in some ways using uh, AV, obviously. But eventually, this this thing is going to be exploited, and and mm -hmm. it's it's a ticking time bomb. It's unfortunate because it's it still feels very modern to me. Mm. There's also um, for enterprises some compliance concerns too. Like if you're running a yeah. browser that's no longer supported, like say you're not getting right. extended security updates, right? And somebody says, "Oh, well, you know, we're, you're going to supply something for us. What version of Windows are you using?" And you say seven. Yep. It's like um. <laughs> you know. That was the thing for people who were sticking with XP. That was when it finally, you know, they really had a change. It was when the browsers stopped mm. updating, right? When you knock, and, you the, know. and that took two years, by the way. Um, yeah, yeah, which is was, kind of interesting. That was the case. Uh, of death. So we'll see how right. long it lasts for seven. I, it, it's going to be based on usage. If the numbers remain and also high, what Chrome I, does. What Google does yeah, with but I mean, Chrome. Because yeah, everybody's based of, on Chrome now, right? <laughs> well, well, okay, fair enough. Actually, that's true. Yeah. Well, Firefox, we should look at Firefox too. Yeah, right? yeah. Has um, Firefox it's said? It's a big user base. Um, I don't I th know if Firefox I feel like said, they lasted the longest with XP. Hmm. Google just said till July 2021 oh. they will support. Well, said at least Chrome until July 2021. Until, right? Uh, so right, until they, least. Yeah, they could yeah. go up. Last time around, like I said, you know, with uh, Windows XP, they, they went two years. <laughs> yeah. Mary Jo had the uh, scoop. Big reorg at uh, at uh, Microsoft this week. Did it happen? Yeah. Is today the day? Is this like today's a, the day? They do it at the beginning of most years, right? Is that right? Yeah, usually January or February, you get these big reorgs. So it, it's not unexpected. No, not really. Well, Although you never know which part of Microsoft's going to get reorged in these things. Like, is it going to be yeah. Azure? Is it going to be Sales? But today it was. Experiences and devices, which is the home of Windows and the home of Surface. Also, just real quick, the the tiny yep. tiny slice of Microsoft that I care about the most. <laughs> I know, I know, um, I okay. know. So, um, uh, you filed this actually uh, at uh, eight a.m. Eight fifteen. It yep. Just, ha <laughs> it just happened at the time. Yep. Um, yep. I saw. I saw it on Tech Meme. Uh, mm -hmm. You were at the very tippity top of the te tech mean <clears throat> heap today. Yeah. Which must Mary Jo, by the way, deserves some credit for the story, but I feel like I deserve some credit for my promo graphic. Oh, well, let me go. Oh, yeah, you do. Let me go, let me go pull up therat.com. <laughs> did you use uh, paint to do that? or? Um... <laughs> no, I did not. You're always good with the graphics. They're always hilarious and timely. <laughs> Panos in, Joe B out, that one? Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, because that, that was a, a picture of something else in the background, and they made a, it look yeah. like Joe Big. Very <laughs> subtle. It's very subtle. Very nice. Nicely, nicely blurred done. to look like the original. Wow. Very nicely you done. Even like you know, played mm -hmm. with the aspect ratio to give it a little bit of cantering. <laughs> That's very nice. Yep. Yep. That's a good. <laughs> but anyway, let's not focus on my amazing achievement here. Let's talk <laughs> instead about. Well, wait a minute. I, now that I'm reading this, I'm a little scared. Uh, what What happened to Joe B? Okay, so there's lots of parts to this, right? So what's the biggest top line thing is Panos now is going to head up Windows and devices, not just devices. So his title stays the same, Chief Product Officer, but now he's running a group called Windows Plus Devices, and that's Windows Client, ex, you know, the experience part of Windows, plus all the other stuff he already was running, so Surface, basically, mm, in right. one combined unit. Before, those were two separate units. And Joe B, who has been running Windows experiences on the client, is going to move to Office and run Office experiences along with another person who I didn't know. Uh, do you know this person, Alice, Elise Holacek, Paul? Do you know who that is? I don't believe so. 
No, I didn't know him either. I'm bad but with together, names, but I that doesn't sound. Yeah, funny. I looked him up on LinkedIn, and I'm like, I don't know that guy, but um, I think he, I think Alice Holacek's going to be engineering, and Joe is going to be product management, and they're going to run it as a team. And at the same time, Joe is keeping the thing called Epic Essentials, Pro- Essential Products Inclusive Community, which means nobody wanted that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> mobile apps on Android and iOS. Oh you know, so he okay. keeps Launcher and he keeps uh, your phone and keeps Microsoft News, I believe, yeah. as part of the. Okay. Um, that makes some sense. Um, it does. It that does. has more to do with the Office part of Microsoft yeah, 365 does, right? than it does with Windows. Yep. Yeah. Agree. Uh, and then um, as part of this as well, uh, what else should we talk about? <laughs> There's so many parts to this. Um, I know. Well, hold, let's hold on one second because. Okay. Let's think about or maybe talk about a little bit. What do we think this means, right? Because yeah. w- when you look at the period of time, it's been about actually it's been almost two years now, right? Since Terry Morrison was kind of shown the door, right? Although I yeah. guess that that occurred over a six month period or whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, my big complaint about Windows has been that it's kind of rudderless. You know, that there isn't mm-hmm. a face of this part of the company. Yeah. Um, Obviously, as part of Microsoft 365, there's some representation there, but there isn't like a a person directly responsible just for Windows, you know? Right. There was a guy, you wrote about this, mm-hmm. Iran Megedio, I think his name is. I know I'm butchering mm-hmm. the pronunciation, but they appointed him in May of last year to kind of be the new face of Windows, but then he never really came out to the public and said, here I am. I'm the guy. Yeah. I'm running yeah. strategy yeah, yeah. for Windows, right? Right. Um, so he, yeah. he also heads up some education initiatives too. And I, I met him a couple times on education tours, but I never mm-hmm. had, like, I, he never came to an event and said, I'm the guy representing windows. Right. Yeah. But, that, but Panos Panay is a very high profile person. So exactly. him, a, a person of his caliber being directly responsible for windows client yeah. to me is great. It was a great, great yeah. news. Um, yeah. it's, it, Windows is still not directly represented on the senior leadership team, which right. problem with, you know, we're, we're, we'll talk about the revenue, uh, the yeah. uh, earnings later, but Microsoft just reported their latest quarterly earnings and we'll never know for sure. Cause they don't provide the math we need, but I'm pretty damn sure Windows is their single biggest business. <laughs> and, uh, mm-hmm. that's kind of interesting. Um, yeah. that's not long term you know, though. That's not the, f- the future. Microsoft is not. Windows. I know, but how many years have we been saying that? You know, yeah. it's like, yeah, the cloud's the future. Yeah. Windows is the past. Yeah. Cloud's the future. It's like, yeah, well, Windows is still making more money than the cloud guys. Um, yeah. So Here, I, you know what, we'll get, we'll get to that, but yeah, I don't know if you saw what I added to my post later that I got a little snippet from Panos's email to everyone about his, his oh, new I job. I don't think so. Nope. Uh, but he did say, this is an amazing time and opportunity to bring more energy to Windows and our customers using Windows. So he's saying, go. like, we know we, we've been kind of yeah. all over the map. And Pay no attention to that. Oh, Such an Adela fellow. Windows still rules. Well, by the way, I, I actually, uh, if I could read a little bit into this, uh, um, they're never going to come out and say anything about this. But, I mean, this to me is an implicit acknowledgement that they – have ignored Windows too much and to the detriment of their customers and to their partners and to the company. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. So, okay, so good. so that's the tea leaves, which I was going to get to. Like, what does this all mean? I think that's interesting. That's part of it. I mean, I, I that's part of it. I it, yeah. It's it's not a complete reversal. Like I said, there's no SLT representation yeah. here. Um, What's SLT? Or any change. Uh, senior leadership team, sorry. Um so that's like words, such as uh, inner circle, right? Of people he yeah. so, he takes advice from and meets with every week. Panos does yes. not get a seat at the table. No, he does not. The big boy table. But Panos's boss, Rajesh Jha, is on the SLT, the senior le- yeah. leadership team. So the the other thing, uh, you know, if, if you're looking for something negative to worry about um, with the Panos situation. <laughs> and who well, is no, I mean, who, who would that? <laughs> well, who would no, no, be looking words, for that, Paul? Who who looks for the the dark cloud well, no, I and see every this silver is lining. Positive. Okay. Well, actually, I'm. I'm sorry. I, I'm going in a direction that I don't think you're. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going in that direction. Oh, what okay. I mean is, I, one of the complaints one might make about Panos uh, becoming in charge of Windows is that he is the last vestige of the Sanofsky regime. Oh, um, he that's came not up good. under Sanofsky. 
Um, that was a very divisive period of time in Microsoft's history. It what did was he do? Because Sanofsky was the guy who brought us Windows 8. What did he do? What did Panay do in the Sanofsky era? Uh, he ran hardware, so right? Not, well, he did soft Surface. Uh, Surface only oh, happened well, that's because not bad. Sanofsky that's... looked at it and said, this needs to happen. Yeah. And he pushed yeah. it through. So he, he, that's, so he, uh, he, that's plausible deniability. I mean, he's not sitting there going, what we really need is a tablet-based operating system. He's not doing that. <laughs> so I, I th though he did come up in Microsoft under Sanofsky and literally owes his career at Microsoft to Sanofsky. Um, I don't, he is, he doesn't have the ability to ruin windows like Sanofsky did. There's no indication that that's what he wants. In fact, um, <laughs> thank you. Glad to know that. <laughs> well, no, well, okay. But I mean, uh, he literally is the only major <laughs> executive of any stripe at Microsoft who was part of Sanofsky's regime. I mean, it's kind of there. interesting that he survived. And I, my belief is that the reason he is still there is because he is not like right. Sanofsky mm -hmm. and those right. people, who all of whom are gone now, by the way. So, right. I mean, it's I, he's not that person. I don't think we need to worry about that. And um, yeah. I think the synthesis between the hardware and the software here, which is something he's always tried to push, is going to make Surface and Windows better. I, I think he is the right person hmm. um, for this job. There were lots of uh, gates this year, none of them really amounting to much, uh, including the Surface Laptop 3 crack gate. Did it happen to you? Uh, I have to say, I was a little nervous. Uh, I mm -hmm. happened to be on Twitter the other day, mm -hmm. and that's enough to be nervous just in general. Yeah. Uh, in, in, <laughs> in particular, because of a tweet that I saw fly by, Mary Jo, um, mm -hmm. about our beautiful Surface Laptop 3s and potential issues for the screens cracking? What's mm. going on? I know. I, it's, I'm telling you, when you're an owner of a device and you see this come through, it doesn't make you feel too good. Yeah, so there's people on Reddit, Microsoft Answer Forum, and now I'm hearing from people directly out there on the internet who say they have a new, brand new Surface Laptop 3, and they haven't dropped it. They haven't slammed it down. They haven't had any kind of a bumping issue with it. And they're noticing either a hairline crack along the corner um, or sometimes a crack across the entire screen that just have spontaneously shown up. Ooh. So we should give uh, Micah the good news, though. I know. You're safe, Micah, probably, <laughs> because everybody who's yep. reporting it has an aluminum uh, Surface I mean, Laptop 3. And who would be dumb enough to not get a Surface Laptop without a, without Elegant Air? Now, uh, I have to say, right here. Mary Jo, <laughs> I had an out loud cackle when I was reading your article and you said, knock on mm -hmm. aluminum. That was a great line, so... Props yeah. for that. But here you can see me um, mm -hmm. feeling my fine <laughs> yeah, A little too much, frankly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting a little uncomfortable too, honestly. Um, and that may be what's keeping my my laptop safe. I will say whenever uh, I, I covered the event where they announced these new laptops, and I remember the moment where they were bragging about the lack of the little rubberized sort of rim or seal around the outside of the laptop screen as sort of, that was a feature. Um, right. And that was because of the way that they'd precisely engineered it to where you can open it and close it with one finger while you're playing the piano with your other hand or something like that. Yeah, but make sure the finger's in the middle, not in the corner, because apparently that might be... <laughs> That's a bad spot. ...part of the issue. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it's, it's got to be a flex problem, you know, like a... Uh, That's what people wonder, are saying. Yeah. Well, so um, people say they're the, hearing this cracking sound sometimes when they open it. And then yeah, some people have it. said they noticed a flex and then suddenly the screen cracks. Oh, Lord. So then Do you go ahead. Go sir. ahead. Well, I was, I, was, I, I don't know. Uh, is this impacting both 13 and 15 inch versions or just one? So I've only heard from 13s oh, so no. far. That's ours. Which is interesting. So I wonder yeah. if they made an internal change there to trim the weight maybe or mm. one person so okay first we should say this is not widespread because right. i haven't heard from everybody who has a surface laptop three and it also has not affected me um right. but we don't know how many people and microsoft of course is not saying how many people but one person i saw on one of the places where people are reporting problems that guessed something that I thought made a lot of sense. He said, I wonder if it has to do with Microsoft removing the gasket between the glass and the metal when they took the Alcantara out. Yeah. 
Uh, so, well, and let me ask you because Mary Jo, <laughs> you you have one that uh. um, that is just the aluminum, and yep. you mentioned that you haven't kept it protected or any any yep. type of extra safe or anything like that, and it's still causing these issues. So, no, for me or, though, rather, I, I you're thought, not, yeah, you're not having the problem, right? Yeah, you would think me, right? Because I'm just like literally throwing it in a large purse and taking it with no sleeve. And I've also noticed my cat has started but, jumping up on here. Whoa! And yeah, but I don't, I don't think it's. I don't think the problem is when you're carrying it around. I think the problem is opening and closing it. Okay. Yeah. Um, and you're probably not doing that in a, you know, like the gorilla in those Samsonite ads where he's jumping up and down in the luggage or whatever. All right, I'm you not. Know, like you're but, probably but pretty somebody, gentle with it. I am, but I see people who are are reporting this saying I'm not somebody who slams my laptop open or closed and I baby yeah. it and it's. So we don't really have any sense of how widespread, why it's happening to some people and not others. But we do know as of yesterday that Microsoft, Microsoft said they're investigating it. And that's the first time they've said that. They said a limited number of customers have contacted us and reported screens cracking through no, no fault of their own. And we are evaluating the situation and investigating the root cause of the claims. You know, do you think Microsoft, under any circstances, would say an astronomical number of customers have contacted <laughs> us? No company, no, no company. No. Um, no. <laughs> you know. But you know, I would say both you and I would have heard from an astronomical number of people on Twitter and email if this was happening to a lot of people, right? Right, right. That makes right. sense. I would think. So here's You're my right. one, my one sort of issue. If it, if we've seen it only in the ones that are aluminum or as far as it seems so far um then how is it an opening sort of screen issue because this screen is not affected like a, stop by the touching Alcantara. it you're gonna break it what are you doing <laughs> you're right what am i thinking i need to i don't know where how many news reports it. you have to read <laughs> uh, how come i you know it, it seems that the ones that have alcantara are not being affected is there different i wonder if there's a difference in yeah. the actual build of the product between my version and your version that's really aside weird, from it, just the that's felt that's gonna be a weird coincidence i i I, uh, I remember I, I used to live out west and um, we would get the engine steam cleaned on the car and then the oil would leak. And so before the, the grease covering the engine actually held the oil inside. And like maybe that's the role that Alcantara plays. I kind of love the, that uh, theory. It, like it holds it together, you know. <laughs> I like was, the guys are all dumping on it because it's got like Cheetos and the <laughs> wrist rest. But actually that's the thing that's holding it together. It's that's the glow. So I, it's, it's a coincidence that you bring that up because I've been researching getting my engine steam cleaned. So it's really odd that you bring that up today. <laughs> so the, yeah. the motto is do not. Do, do not, not do steam that. clean your engine or the oil will yeah. leak. Uh, <laughs> well, we had an older car, but I mean, you know, at the time it was just disappointing because literally it was holding in oil from dripping out of the engine. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Uh, so what do we do? We just I hope know. against hope. Is that the solution for well, that? Some people are bringing the laptops into Microsoft stores or the places they bought them and they're mm. saying, hey, I this happened to me and I didn't cause it. And am I under any kind of a warranty? Am I going to have to replace it? And right now, the agents who are responding online and in stores are telling people you're liable for it and you've got to replace it and we're not paying for it. I My guess is if this yeah, is something Microsoft can document, they're not going to say that because... I don't know if you guys remember this, but in 2018, there were some um, problems with flickering screens on Surface Pro 4s, and Microsoft ended up replacing the devices for free in the end. Right. So I think if this really is something they can prove is a pattern and not the fault of users, I think they're going to have to replace them for free. Mm -hmm. That would be yeah. my guess. I will, I will say this, too, because obviously in the Surface world, we're all familiar with the problems of three and a half years ago, whenever that was, um, three, four years ago, whatever, with Surface Pro 4, and especially with the first-gen Surface Book, uh, massive reliability problems that they never really got on, on top of. But the, one of the big problems with that event initially was just how silent Microsoft was. Yeah. So I will say at the very least, like this time they've acknowledged it, what seems like very early on, and I, I take that as a hopeful sign too. Me too. I think, I think, yeah. um, I saw some reports of this dating back to January, but they were very isolated. And now they're kind of piling on, right? And so yeah, yeah. now that the press no, it's has not picked like up we, on but this. Yeah, we haven't been yeah. talking about this since November, right? And then right. all of a sudden oh, yeah. they finally say something. I mean, it, it seems like they did jump on it fairly early. So I, I, I will at yes. least give them credit for that. I mean, I, 
one of the, the you remember the it's a hard computer science problem was one of the things that had come out of that initial event. I mean, it's not like that, at least not yet. So it, it's that's a, that's a positive sign. It is. It is. And they're at a point in their surface um, history where you don't want this to start happening, right? Because they're yeah. they're starting to get people liking their devices and they pass, they pass the consumer reports hurdle that they had. And I think yep. they know if this really is an issue, they've got to be on top of it and they've got to get to the agents in the field and tell them, stop telling customers it's their problem, right? And tell them we're looking at it yep. and, you know, hold on, don't panic. So I'm trying not yeah. to panic, but I'm kind of panicking. I like every morning now I open my Surface Laptop 3 and I like put my hands on the screen like are there any cracks? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got to make sure there are no dust particles anywhere on it so that if you press it, yeah, oh boy. Yeah, don't get any crumbs in there. You know. <laughs> Don't be eating Cheetos over this thing. Huh? Oh, no, man, but the Alcantara is great for rubbing your Cheeto dust on. That's right. <laughs> Darn it. No, you are you are okay, Micah, because it. I haven't seen anybody with Alcantara saying that this is a problem for them. Weird. I haven't seen a single person say that. Weird. Build is on. Now, we're are we interrupting anything important that you wanted to see? or? I, no. I think the Scott Goo thing was replaying when this started. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, we missed mm -hmm. that. We... We uh, we streamed uh, Satya Nadella's uh, RGV to CW mm -hmm. speech. Mm -hmm. That that cleverly hidden message. <laughs> what was that, by the way? Oh, I you don't still even don't know. know. We found out before the end of our stream. It's base sixty four for wow. devs. It's Indeed. it's his way of saying developers, developers, developers. Uh, I wouldn't it was give him clever. personal credit for that, but yes, it was it is. clever. <laughs> I thought that was clever. Yeah. Do you think somebody said, Mr. Nadella, if you put RGV to CW behind you, the world, yeah. it's It'll an be Easter super egg. Cool. It will be super cool. Yeah. I don't think he even knew yeah. about it. I think they just said, hey, stand here. Read that. You don't think that's his house? <laughs> was that his house? Uh, uh, it looked like a set. That's a good question. I, th I think if a lot of those were sets. It doesn't look so. like that all the time. <laughs> I can tell you yeah. that. <laughs> well, and then uh, and then we watched the Imagine Cup, which was better, frankly, be yeah. uh, because it didn't have, I don't know, I just felt a little Actually, less awkward. Actually, I'll tell you, you know why it was better? Why? It, and it was the reason everything was better, because everything was held to 20 to 30 minutes. Yes, short. That mm -hmm. Honestly, that made it better. Yeah. Just get yeah. to the point. I'll agree with you on that. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I know. Keep things moving. That's always good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I would then... have changed the order of things a little bit. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> let, let me just... Uh, so we then did we, did we watched Scott Hanselman, and I had a blast with that because he's sitting That's in good. his... Clearly, was his own computer. And mm -hmm. he loves... You know, he's a real geek, and so he loved playing and yeah. pushing all the buttons, and it was really cool. He had a stream <laughs> deck. We, oh. we, we caught the stream deck, and he's making yeah. the lights behind him change colors. And, mm -hmm. you know, he's just... And why does he have one of these in his house, you ask? Because... <laughs> He's a podcaster. That's yeah. Why. Okay. Didn't All his kids sneak a little view in the door or something too? Yeah, and his was more natural than the Panos Panay <laughs> faux. Uh, yeah. I, I actually, yeah. I, every time a child appeared on any video, it was very obviously not stage. natural. Yeah, stage. I, and that was the one thing I, I, you got to give them credit for pulling this thing off. It was, it was awesome overall. I thought they did great. Uh, every, I, I think, really yeah, do. I think the stuff they did from home is, it, I think it's an interesting insight. I, I think I said this to Brad and Hedy this morning, you know, it's really interesting. You see the executives like Scott Goo or Sachin Nadella or whoever, and they're these in their, you know, mansions or whatever. And then there's like these, it's like this guy or woman who works on edge or this person who, you know, mm -hmm. kind of a 20 something. And they're in like a, an apartment, <laughs> I loved it. you know, with nothing. <laughs> it was the real. Wall. It was no, genuine. I, mean, it, I really yes, loved that it. Stuff was, that stuff was really yeah. genuine. Yeah. yeah. I thought it was really, um, yeah, really great. Yeah. I really yeah. enjoyed it. Now we had to tune out before Scott. In fact, we mm -hmm. tuned out, we watched most of uh, Hanselman's, piece, but uh, we stopped when he started doing uh, .NET. As soon as I went to <laughs> Visual <laughs> Studio, I like the VS oh, yeah. Code stuff, of course. Yeah. In fact, I've mm -hmm. been told I'm going to be bumped ahead in the line on Ooh. that uh, that cool, you know, what do they call it? Uh, I love it. Anyway, there's a lot to talk about. There's a lot to yeah. talk about. Mm -hmm. Holy okay. cow. Um, yeah. let's, let's, uh, let's get started. So, Build continue. It finishes today. It's only a two-day event. Mm -hmm. It's all tomorrow's like reruns of of content. Yeah. So streaming. if you miss anything, you can watch but tomorrow. That's one yeah. thing I love about this is that nobody mm -hmm. had to pay for it, and everybody yeah. was invited. 
And look, no one, no one is saying this uh, exactly this way. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of speculation around uh, someday in the future that Microsoft and other companies will have these in-person conferences. Yes. Yes. But mm-hmm. how will this experience impact what those things look like? Because in the very near future and then in the future going you know, forever, maybe there are just going to be people who don't want to come physically right. and be around that many people. Right. Yeah. You've spoiled and us. Will they? Yeah. So will they do something like this plus uh, mm-hmm. the live events? You yes, because there are still people who want to get together. Oh, there's. Oh, and there's yeah, you missed that part, right? Yeah. 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 No, of course. But I mean, you know, yeah. like this really ties into what they were saying about uh, teams as long ago as, you know, February, which sounds like three years ago now. But when this work at home <laughs> thing first started, um, I think it was. I don't want to say it, it doesn't matter. I don't, I don't want to use the name wrong, but um, one of the uh, corporate vice presidents from Microsoft was saying, look, this is going to change work forever. This is not a temporary thing. Mm. And so if you think about Jared like Jared Spataro. Uh, Jared Spataro. Probably, yeah, probably. I, mean, I can't remember which one it was, but probably Jared Spataro. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I just didn't want to get it wrong. But, uh, you know, the idea is that, look, in the future, we will have these meetings and they'll be in person. But the, mm-hmm. the capabilities of Microsoft Teams allows you to record those meetings. It allows people to come in remotely while it's live. For people who watch it later or even live, there'll be li- live translations of the language. There'll be uh, automatic uh, textual display of what's being said. You know, there are like all these advantages to doing it both ways at the same time. Mm-hmm. And I think you could apply that to the conference situation. Yeah. And you, you know? got to figure when they're looking at expenses, the expense of doing build this way versus the expense of having everybody oh, come to Seattle, renting the convention center, all the food, yeah, yeah. right? I mean, I, you have well, to but, look but, at that I mean, if they you're still have to, weighing I, this. I, but they can't just cut it off. Like, in other words, no, no, no. maybe, no. you know, I don't know what the attendance level of build was, five, 6,000, something like that, probably. About that. Um, yeah. Yeah. So maybe in the future, it's you know, two years from now or something, it's 2,000 people want to show up. Mm-hmm. So maybe they can book mm-hmm. a smaller venue. But maybe they can yep. do this online component where it's live yeah. and, and they yep. repeat sessions like they're doing for different time zones. And people mm-hmm. can watch mm-hmm. these things from home or at work or whatever the situation is, you know. Yeah, I, I think that'd I be think cool. that sounds great. I, yeah. You know? And you know what worked this week? And I was worried about this was how, how would they hold up under the, the load of all the people coming in and talking in the stream and watching the stream? And most I haven't seen many people complain about it going down. Very few, very, very few. Oh, yeah, I wasn't even aware of any, so that's good. Yeah, so that that was a good test um, of how, how this would all work, for sure. Yeah, so, I mean, overall, um, it was great. Um, yeah. Obviously, I mean, the leading news was the uh, Xbox Game Pass thing. So no, don't, about- no, yeah. no, 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 stop, stop. That was, like, no. really <laughs> top of mind. As happens every year, Microsoft brought in new products. They also rang out some of the old products. One of the biggest surprises was Microsoft's streaming gaming service. They bought it for a lot of money, uh, gave it only about a year, brought in some high-profile talent, and then just suddenly closed it down. Uh, technically, it's, I guess, an Xbox story. It's in your Xbox section. But actually, I think it goes much farther than that. And I don't think Mary Jo wants to dial out for this. Microsoft's giving <laughs> up on Mixer. In fact, yeah. I wrote the story. This is uh, Oh, right. I'm sorry. This is a Mary Jo story. This is a right? bit of a shock. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Also, when they announced it was kind of telling in the middle of the Apple WWDC. Oh, keynote. yeah. Yeah. That's why it yeah. was a shock. It's like, what? I was What's watching, I wasn't watching the Friday. keynote. I was watching just to see if who was like, going to dump uh, news, hey, and I'm like, oh, Microsoft. <laughs> the, the rut's tweeting up a storm because of Apple. Let's drop the news now. Right. That yeah, so I, in some ways, am not surprised about this. Um, right. Yep. I mean, Microsoft was spending so much money. They were they were paying all these big-time game streamers like Ninja and Shroud, whoever those people are, um, to stream <laughs> yep. on their platform to try to get Mixer oh, to be more I competitive with that. Twitch. They brought right? Ninja over. That they must did. have cost yeah. them millions of dollars. That was only it's a few millions. months ago. Millions. Uh, one of those guys yes. got $25 million. <laughs> I don't remember who's who. Oh, but, it would have been Ninja. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. But, but, yeah. but here's the thing. So just to, to Microsoft's credit, because uh, I think this was last fall when that happened. I don't understand that world. I don't understand how one of these goons is Me worth neither. $25 million, whatever. I don't, I, and I'm a gamer and I don't get it, but okay, yeah. whatever. If you're serious about this market, 
And this is like anything else. Like you're a sport, you you want LeBron James, you got to pay for that. Mm-hmm. If you want to win the championship, you know that's what yeah. you do. So right. uh, to me, that showed that they were serious about it. Right? They I gave know. it. You know, they know. they tried. Anyway, it didn't work. But, yeah. No, no. What the the way they originally got into this was they saw what Twitch, what Amazon was doing with Twitch. They saw what Google was doing with YouTube and around gaming. And they're like, you know what? We we're in we're in we're in the gaming space. We need a game streaming service. So they bought a company called Beam in 2016, which was just like 30 people or something, and they turned that into Mixer. Um, and then they kept trying to get Mixer to go. And I kind of knew it was in trouble because you'd see a lot of Microsoft MVPs and Microsoft employees streaming, but they would be using oh, Twitch, Twitch, right? They would never That's use Mixer. Mary right? Jo, next year, and I'm you like, see so, music for next. I'm just saying, right, go on. Right. So it kind of reminds me in a way this happening of what happened to them with Nokia. Like yeah. they paid a lot yeah. of money, they invested heavily, and then they cut their losses early. Um, and instead of just letting Microsoft this continue to try to go... But yeah. the Microsoft employees would all have Android phones. Well, usually iPhones actually back in the day, but iPhones, yeah. Uh, now they're now they're Android, but yeah, at the time it yeah. was all iPhones. Yeah, I know. So, so I, I guess I wasn't that surprised when I saw them yeah. do this, even though they lost. You, um, you know, do you think they're going to at the at the next earnings like talk about writing this <laughs> off or down? <laughs> I, you know, it's not a no, billion I don't dollar was, I don't thing, think, right? But oh, it, well, they paid Shroud yeah. $10 million, they're telling me in the chat million. Room, wow. for one okay. week and yeah. 25 to Ninja, and now they're going to give him a exit fee. Okay. Oh, they are? Wow. But, you know, e- even if it's hundreds of millions of dollars, I mean, in the context it's of things, yeah. this isn't it's not billions. This is not Nokia. No. So, no, but here's no, the problem. The, 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 uh, the dark lining to the story is the two big players in this market, which Mary Jo mentioned are YouTube and Twitch. And those right. two services are owned by Microsoft's two biggest cloud competitors, Google right. and Amazon. Yep. And they can't partner with those guys, even though those yeah. services will of course be available to people that want to stream from Xbox or windows or whatever. Uh, so they went with the tone deaf uh, choice of Facebook Beloved Facebook. You know, everyone loves Facebook these days. They went with Facebook. So, Is there somebody else they could have gone with? That's that's what I don't know because I don't know oh, yeah. this market. I, but. Well, they could have someone you would never heard of. It, it, honestly, the way to do right. this is to not go with anybody and just say, yeah. we support all streaming services. Here's the ballot box. You can yeah. <laughs> pick the one you want. I mean, and, Twitch uh, is the reason they bought Mixer because they were yeah. trying to right. compete with right. Twitch. So you don't want to give it, yeah. and that's Amazon. There's that's YouTube, like YouTube, which is, uh, you know. Yeah, duplex. You, know, yeah. you, you buy the distant number five. Right. <laughs> <laughs> then you just fail. So make, giving it to Facebook Gaming, which is a new service, makes sense. Are they giving it yeah. or selling it? I don't know. No, neither. They're, t- they're, they're just advising customers. They're just saying, right, they're there. saying to users, you should go over there, right? Um. They're not. Well, they're not sending any of the Mixer team to Facebook Gaming. In fact, some of the Mixer team is going to go to Teams to work on the uh, low band, low bandwidth wow. technology. I think, right? And according to Business <laughs> Insider, both Ninja and Shroud are free agents now. Yeah, yes. they're not going to Facebook either. No, no, they're not going yeah. to Facebook. I, I eagerly, eagerly await the decision when Shroud will announce that he's taking his talents to South Beach. <laughs> uh, fishing boat and uh he's yeah i um we're on mixer i mean i'm sad because it was one of the ways yeah. we were streaming the show's yeah. Yeah. i mean although oh, it's good I, there's it probably a reason good. why a lot of microsoft guys were using twitch to, you know whatever but um yeah no did you ever try to go on a windows insider webcast because they used mixer and it was always really the service just what it didn't hold up it was there was always really glitchy and it wasn't working i'm like okay guys what's going on here right (laughs) it's too bad that's all i'm saying yeah it's too bad yeah yeah you know a moment of silence we could just add throw this in a pile of dead microsoft technology (laughs) that some people really cared about now it's dead i know I know. I should have bought there that, with like, uh, portable media players and should have bought Zoom. that. I saw someone blaming you this morning, saying Therot 
wrecked Killed my it, day. Tree. It's like, thanks for ruining my day. I'm like, dude. <laughs> just for, don't shoot the messenger. messenger. What do you yeah, like? Man. Shoot the messenger. Yeah. You know that's a thing, right? Do you read Shakespeare? Come on. <laughs> I'm just I'm just sad I didn't get on that ninja and shroud stock before. Yeah, no kidding, right? Yeah. We're too late. You all look fine and fed as a fiddle. Despite the whiplash you probably suffered Friday and Saturday. <laughs> oh, oh, you have no idea. <laughs> um no so, idea. Where to begin? Just to get you up to date. Everybody knows what TikTok is. It's just literally the hottest social media thing going all over the world. It is, in fact, I think the number one app in the United States. Uh, it is very popular with the Utes, beating uh, Instagram, Snapchat. Mm -hmm. And the like, uh, it's very much like Vine. It's uh, short videos from uh, 15 seconds to one minute, usually mm -hmm. set to music. There's a lot of lip syncing going on, but it's also just there's political commentary. Comedian Sarah wow. Cooper does great stuff with her Donald Trump lip syncing. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I thought it was all about cute kitten videos and people dancing in their living room. So well, I'm missing something. That's the secret uh, of TikTok is the algorithm watches you as you watch it and then gives you stuff you like. So Did I just betray something about betrayed my preferences? a little something. <laughs> P All I see is uh, Korean boy bands. I don't know. I don't get any yeah. of those. So there you go. Um, see, that's the algorithm at work. There have been complaints <laughs> in the past about TikTok uh, and its algorithm, perhaps uh, because it's owned by a company in China called ByteDance, perhaps blocking, uh, well, fat people. <laughs> uh, <laughs> nothing about right. Ouijers, nothing about Hong Kong. Um, mm -hmm. So there have been complaints about the algorithm in the past, all of which TikTok has apologized for and fixed. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as I can see, and I use it on both Android and iOS, but on the iOS app, it doesn't even ask for location permissions. It asks for permissions mm -hmm. to use the camera and the microphone if and only if you want to record something, if you're just watching. Uh, it doesn't yeah, know anything. It's all going back to China, Leo. It's all going all to it. China. Even TikTok says it's not going to China. It's going to the U.S. and servers in the U.S. and Singapore. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, That's what they say. <laughs> never the, well, and I believe them because, frankly, who, look, okay. If you're in the depart, if you're in the armed services, no, you shouldn't have TikTok on your phone as you right. wander the Pentagon. That's right. I grant you that. Uh, Unless, you shouldn't have shouldn't have Facebook, you know, Strava, Chinese, Instagram or, uh, either. Somebody no, might break right. out into a dance or something. Then you might you want know, to you be it. ready. You want to be ready. <laughs> uh, but as a normal citizen, I, I feel like TikTok uh, knows less about me than certainly than Facebook mm -hmm. or Instagram or a variety of other things I've installed right. on this phone, including well, apps from all over the about world. about you and is sending that information to the Chinese government and or the Communist Party of China. I mean, don't you understand the ramifications? <laughs> so despite no proof of, uh, of uh, that or anything else. Right. So it's literally no proof of that. My yeah. suspicion is it might have a little something to do with the TikTok uh, meme that spread about registering for the president's Tulsa campaign event mm. and then not showing mm. up. That was, a we understand, due to a TikTok meme and then due mm. to a, the K-pop stands, which mm. <laughs> for reasons I don't know, K-pop fans are called stands. And uh, they apparently jumped on this, registered for a million oh, tickets, uh, much to the fool Brad Parscale, who, who trumpeted it, say, look, we got a million people registered, yeah. little knowing that yeah. the way it was set up, anybody could register. Uh, nobody, sh none of those showed up. They had a big outdoor thing. They had, it was kind of embarrassing and dismantle it. And, uh, you know, uh, the stadium itself inside wasn't even full in Tulsa. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's a little bit knowing our president and well, uh, how personally he takes his stuff. It's just nice to see him going after some company that's not Huawei for a change, you know? Yeah. <laughs> well, and that's the other thing. He's got, you know, he's got a love-hate with China. You know, it goes back and forth. <laughs> so the last thing we heard, uh, he said last week, I'm going to ban it. Unclear under what authority he would ban it. Cepheus, <laughs> the Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States, mm -hmm. would have the power, I think, uh, to do mm -hmm. something yeah. about it. They're investigating but they haven't said, mm -hmm. said anything. These videos are too viral. Viral is bad. It's too damn entertaining. That's clear. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've been going back and forth. Then, by the way, on the Air Force One, he said, 
I'm 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 going to shut it down and I don't want anybody to buy it. At which point Microsoft who apparently in behind the scenes have been negotiating for weeks for to buy the US and uh, Australia and New Zealand assets said ah, threw up their hands. Then the next day Satya Nadella calls the president according to a post on uh, Microsoft's blog and they were dial number 2. They yeah. <laughs> Mr. President, uh, <laughs> yep. what if we did buy it? And apparently they worked out something. Then later, the president says something really kind of unprecedented. Oh, and we want to cut. I know. We want to. <laughs> yeah. He yeah. wants a No, we want, we want you to pay the Treasury <laughs> a lot of money. That's how, that's how yeah. our government works. It's very mob sure. kind of mentality. Like, well, we made the deal, so we should get, yeah. you know. A per did he ever mention a percentage? Because I didn't see. No. But it would I mean, key money. Remember that phrase, key money? It's key. Like, key like money. that's a lot, right? Key? Yeah. It's no, no. Key, like, it was implied like tenant uh, oh. realtor. Oh, that's what type. it meant. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> all Donald that. understands is real estate. So anyway. It's a shame yeah. if this deal yeah. were to fall it's apart is all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. So then the negotiations are back on, right? Right. Apparently. But they have until September 15th or it's off. <laughs> they are still actively pursuing this, which blows my mind. They are. Do they so many see this as an opportunity like, hey, it. we're going to get a deal? They're not buying the whole I, thing. They're only buying the... Uh, they're buying eyeballs. They, the Microsoft loves communities. They love eyeballs. They love communities. Yeah. So this is yeah. Minecraft, GitHub, um, LinkedIn. LinkedIn. These are all... Yeah. These are all about communities. They love that. And this um, is the Youngs. I mean, that's why they bought Minecraft, right? Is, uh, is we want to yeah. get them cradle to grave... Right. Exactly. So here's a chance to get people in their teens and 20s. The problem here, though, is what, what company, <laughs> what leadership of what company in its right mind would take on a social networking service now? With all of the policing you're going to have to do for hate groups yeah. and hate speech and racism right. and whatever else, it's it's got to be a nightmare. Well, you got to um, think the not, president you know, might have said, I don't know, to Satya, and whatever you do, <laughs> you got to yes. you got to make sure you got keep those conservative voices uh, free. Exactly. Sure. That, yep. that, <laughs> and maybe that's shut market. down those K-pop stands. We don't like them. But the reason the reason they shouldn't buy this company is because they're basically first of all, TikTok does not want to be sold. <laughs> does not want right. to sell some of its assets to anybody. This is something yeah. being forced on them by a foreign government. Yeah. This is exactly the kind of thing that the US government says that China does <laughs> with right. its companies. Yep. Like if Microsoft were to take this part of this company over, it would blow away all of the goodwill it's gotten for all its ethical nonsense since Sachin Adela took over. I, I mean, this is, I, it, you're doing this at the behest of the United States government. It's crazy. What a huge It is a mistake. huge risk. It's a, it's a giant risk, right? But I've been looking, I've been trying to find reasons they might do it. And there are reasons they might, right? Besides okay. they? just they wanting good to get the use. <laughs> <laughs> are they good reasons? Well, do you remember when Microsoft bought LinkedIn and everybody was like, why? Yeah. And do you oh, remember, remember what they said the I reason was? I remember an early morning phone call freaking out with some, you know, well, you know, yeah. whoever, anyway, with somebody high I up at know. Microsoft. You can guess who. Not yeah. understand. <laughs> yeah, not, not understand. And, and it, it was like trying to talk me off a cliff. Like, yeah. this uh, to me yeah. made no sense at the time. I got to tell you, years later, it was a good idea. Yep. So well, you know actually, what? Do you remember what they said? I thought they paid too much. No, do you remember why they said two reasons? They said, um, they wanted to have the data. So yeah. Microsoft just wants more data. They want to train their AI models with data. They want to use this data they can't to get from their search engine create, like, to the volume right. that create Google advertising. Has, right? Like this has an advertising aspect, right? Like mm -hmm. a lot of money is being spent on TikTok. Oh, for TikTok ads. has a huge upside. There's a lot and of money what? to be made. Microsoft's yeah. ad business is beep, or flat yeah. at the best, right? So there's okay. another synergy. Is, synergy. is that worth? Like, what's the math on this? Like, if this thing is this thing worth thirty billion dollars? I know for hundred million. So LinkedIn, users? they paid twenty six billion dollars, and they've barely done anything with LinkedIn. Is thirty right. the number we're talking here? Yes, that's, that's the number right, so. today that CNBC was. And how much do we heard. give pre the President Trump or the Trump family I, or whatever? Exactly. What's the percentage that... <laughs> well, uh, it would be half of big, so 15%. Yeah. 15%. Look, I, that's fair. The, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. I, I know you have a list, but I just wanted to just kind of add in here because you've just reminded me of this. This yeah. thing is worth supposedly $30 billion, whatever. But this or would more. be like buying, um, was it Rovio, the company that made uh, Angry Birds at the height when they were the number mm -hmm. one app on all the platforms 
you know, the company's yeah. dropped off the face of the earth, right? right? right. <laughs> like right. Right. the problem right. with TikTok is that it, it lives in an age where things are very transient. And this right. thing is not necessarily a platform that's building a foundation for the future. It could literally just come and go. It, it could. could. It would be... It would be so Microsoft. But, but to you could have said that of Facebook and WhatsApp and Instagram too. That is, true. Oh, that's absolutely true. true. But I would say I think the world has changed a lot even since then. Yeah. I anyway, think I think if you're Microsoft, what you've got to be looking at is not I want to get this cool social media app that might be a flash on the pan, it might not. It's ByteDance's algorithm, if they can get that as part of the deal. But right? ByteDance because has said, we're going to reveal the algorithm and we call on everybody else no, they, to do they the same. They said it's public, but you know it's not right. totally public, right? Because that's their secret sauce. Well, you know, we had Matt Cutts on Twit <laughs> on uh, Sunday. Oh, He's really? the administrator yeah. of the United States Digital yeah. Service, but also an early Googler. And he said, it's not right. like the Google algorithm. He said, I could write that algorithm in one page. It's a fairly simple algorithm. <laughs> It's not yeah. like the recipe for KFC chicken, guys. This is complicated. <laughs> Basically, he said, you watch engagement, stuff that gets high engagement, you promote, yep. stuff that yep. gets low engagement, you bury, and it's right. all you need to do. Yeah, They've done it very well. And what's the really yeah. the trick, the hard work that they've done is not the algorithm. It's making a platform that people want to put stuff on because you're real you can have an right. algorithm but unless you have stuff feeding it they need millions of videos every week going in there so that yep. they can surface the few good ones and let the rest fade away and they made a really powerful tool and mm -hmm. it turned out there were a lot of people from the vine community and others youtubers and stuff yeah. Who, yeah, yeah. who understood this medium uh, the Musical.ly, they bought Musical.ly, which was turns out to have been a master stroke. That got a whole bunch of new people in there. Yeah. And it's honestly, Carson's saying this in the chat room right now, it's an art form. It's a new medium. Yeah. And the kids yeah. are embracing it. It's yeah. a little annoying that the United States government essentially <laughs> is encouraging Microsoft to steal it. Right. That's the problem. The, the, and yeah. that Microsoft might actually do it, I think, will be a stain on that company that it may not yeah. recover from. Yeah. Yep. So the other thing I'm sure they're looking at, so we talked about advertising, we talked about the algorithm. So the words, these two words come up a lot when you research us a little bit. It's called interest graph. So you know how Microsoft's big on the idea of these graphs, yeah. um, like the social graph yeah. and the work yeah. graph and this graph. So they've got this thing at TikTok called the interest graph that's related to the algorithm. So the idea is... You don't need to have friends on the on TikTok to sign up. Like it's it just kind of uses your interests to kind of grow the set of data that they have about you and then they get more and more accurate in what they feed you. So if you're Microsoft and you're all about AI and algorithms and graphs, you see all of these words, then you see them talking about social good, which fits in with your culture and you're like, "You know what? This looks like a good fit and we're going to we're going to let it run by itself just like we're doing with LinkedIn and we're just going to help them build it and we're not going to try to interfere and we're going to let it stay branded TikTok and there I we go. I would expect that and that would be right. great. They'd get the data they right. want. Yep. Uh look, you change it at 30 your billion dollars though. <laughs> This is the thing. I know. I, well, I don't know. That's yeah. twenty six billion for LinkedIn. Yeah. Twenty six billion for LinkedIn. What have they got from LinkedIn? I still don't nothing. understand it. I still don't understand it. Well, they've done nothing they've with it. I think it's the they've issue. integrated a couple things like Dynamics nope. three sixty five with LinkedIn and and but some we learning don't know apps. What data? What the value of the data that they've got from LinkedIn is? Yeah. Right? What's the install? Yeah. What's the user base on LinkedIn look like? Does anybody know the user count? Yep. You know, yes. active users yeah. or whatever. I know. I'll look. I mean, I guess I'll that. look it up for you. Yeah. And it, you know, the, but yeah, the there's eight, 800 million on TikTok worldwide and 100 million of those or 200 million is um, U.S., right? I LinkedIn has sure, yeah. over 575 million users, 260 million monthly active users. It's not that big. It's actually smaller than Twitter. It's not that big. It's right. much smaller than TikTok. It's like a third right? the size. So, yeah. uh, you know, the problem with LinkedIn, I would say, is that um, you know, as an acquisition is though the people on LinkedIn are also transient in a way because sometimes they're looking for a job right. and most of the times they're right. not, <laughs> you know, yeah. and, um, and okay, whatever, but at least they're professionals. And I think that kind of fits into the whole Microsoft IT space, whatever. Yeah. Um, TikTok, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, this is not a good demographic for Microsoft. I don't, I don't consider this a major problem, but one thing that okay. people will point out is that Microsoft's not exactly a credible consumer. Uh, technology company at this point. <laughs> yeah. You know, here's another, here's a, they could leave it alone. Here's sure. a political question, not a business question. 
You could say, on the one hand, they might be doing this to to curry favor with the White House, mm-hmm. yeah, which is somewhat risky since I don't know if the tenant of the current tenant is going to be I don't, there. I don't, much yeah, longer. I don't. I actually don't see it that way, but. But that's one thing you could say. Certainly, TikTok's yeah. trying to do that. They said, "Oh no, we're going to hire ten thousand people in the U.S. Uh, we've got a, a U.S. CEO, which the president calls a that's puppet." What Broadcom did. Remember when Broadcom wanted right. to buy Qualcomm? They were going to move the headquarters to the United States. They were going to do all this stuff. Didn't do it. Um, and then yeah. the other thing is, politically, you might make a friend in the White House, but you're certainly making an enemy in one of the largest economies in the world, much larger than the U.S. economy. That's China. Right. One that you've had struggled to get any foothold in whatsoever. And that's what I'm wondering. What is Microsoft's relationship with the Chinese market? Do they want that market? Yeah, they want that market. (laughs) Well, this would be the kiss of death. Yeah, <laughs> that'd yes. be it. I don't. I don't, yeah. I don't. I wouldn't worry about it being attached to the current administration. I don't. I don't actually view it that way. I can't write anything about a topic like this without getting a bunch of partisan political nonsense in my comments. But it really doesn't, to me, have any. That's not the issue. It doesn't matter who yeah. the president is. Uh, if if the United States government unilaterally decides that this company is bad and we're going to ban it, and then okay, well, we'll let Microsoft seize some percent of its assets, and then that makes it okay. I'm sorry, but. That kind of behavior, if that happened in China, we would never stop complaining about it. There would be action against the, you know, I mean, this is exactly the kind of thing that our government accuses China of. And it's just hypocritical. And Mm -hmm. for Microsoft to be a party to that, for, for that to be the way this came about, this company that does not want to be sold it's like we're annexing Austria or something. What are you talking about? That's crazy. <laughs> oh, it's crazy. Uh, yeah. That's why it's shocking I, to me that somebody with as much savvy <laughs> as Satya Nadella would yeah. take this yeah. risk for with very little business upside would take this risk. I think there's I don't a get ton it. of business upside. Maybe that's it. I, Maybe it's so good that they yeah. can't turn yeah. away. Yeah, I think that's the problem. They're, they're like, see all these things that they want, the data, the algorithm, the interest I, okay, graph. So- I actually, I think you're on to something because the one thing I think everyone can agree on is that Microsoft has bet its future on the cloud. But one of the Microsoft, one of the problems that it has is, you know, a lot of its infrastructure is dedicated to what is essentially private businesses. They're not getting access to that data. They can't use it to build their graph and so forth. And so they are losing out to Google uh, in the kind of the public search space, obviously by a huge Mm -hmm. margin. And what that means is they don't get as much data to fill in the public parts of the graph. And right. Bing just is, you know, and maybe these other networks, LinkedIn is good for work type graph. Uh, TikTok yep. could work on the consumer side, gives it a lot more exposure mm-hmm. to the outside world than it would have otherwise. So you could kind of make mm-hmm. that argument, but you really got to weigh that against the downsides, which I just feel are. Yeah, you do. Here's really my, here's my another theory. Microsoft m- misjudged this. Satya Nadella misjudged this. Thought he would be seen as a savior Right. Of a product that um, millions of American teenagers and young people love, that they'd be seen as a savior because otherwise it was going to be shut I, down. Yeah, but that's like saying, hey, guys, don't worry. We figured out something for TikTok. Oldsmobile is going to buy it. And they'd be like, I'm sorry, who? <laughs> well, like, I, I mean, Microsoft's to audience, better known Microsoft's, to that audience than Oldsmobile. Oh, yeah, but they're better known as they might as well make couches or right. – I mean, they're like, yeah. uh, didn't they make the rotary phones? Is that who Microsoft well, is? Well, they might I mean, still have ambitions with the, the youngs. They, they do. They do know Minecraft. They do, but. I know. So here's know. here's where but the I think, But are, that's right? what I'm saying. I think it's a misjudgment because I think, and I bet you, I'm going to predict that this week Microsoft will pull out because I oh, think they did really? not understand what it like would look go. like. No, no, no. What it would look I like. I feel bad about this. So, I, I'm nervous. I think they're going to charge forward. I do too. I think they're going to charge full full steam ahead because Huge. you got to think how does how does Satya Nadella make a decision? He doesn't just sit at home reading poetry and say, you know, I want to be a savior today, well, right? You don't know that, Mary he, Jo. No, he has to, <laughs> I do know that. <laughs> he goes in with the senior leadership team, who are a bunch of very practical people, and Frank yeah. Shaw, his <laughs> his like PR handler, and. They all have talked about how do is this going to look like if these negotiations were going on for weeks before we found out on Friday, yeah. they've thought this through way beyond what we think they've thought through. Oh, that, right? okay, like, by the way, that, that that could be. And I, I the problem, though, is once you get the president stepping in and wishy washing yeah. his way back and forth, 
Right. Now, unfortunately, yeah. you're complicit in something. Yes, that's my that's point. And frankly, you as soon as he yeah, said, I want to cut, yep. then you should have yeah. been like, I'm done. Now you know you're what? in a mob okay. mentality. You're working with Tony Soprano. And if <laughs> I were, just honestly. Like the big over at Apple, we're not giving you a fee. What, like, <laughs> what are you so, talking about? So, guys, guys, can I say one thing here? Does anyone really take anything he says seriously? Trump. Back to Adela? Like, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah, because he's still the president. I, because, yeah, no, because he's is, still the leader fun, of the free world. This is a really fun story for the media, but when he said that, I didn't even write it up because I'm like, yeah, he says a lot of things that are completely well, off the cuff and ridiculous, right. and we shouldn't no, he's, we shouldn't give them the he's weight. He's a moron, for sure. I, I, but right. I, yeah, I, right. But you're both right, right, by the way. I, like you, try to ignore everything he says, and Everything he says tomorrow, you could turn around and, and absolutely, completely. He, he completely nevertheless, yeah. but yes, nevertheless, that stink, that, 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 that you could be tarred with that brush. Well, that you lie down saying. with a dog, you're going to get up with fleas. <laughs> yes. Yes. And yeah. uh, I think there's a risk. To, I, I I think you know the rumor was Apple was also in the running, and they said no, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. Right. They're like, nope. <laughs> you know who actually would make most sense, and I notice I hear nary a peep from them is Google. Google this, would make. I sense. bet you Microsoft yeah. sees this as their YouTube. Me too. Yes. Yeah. In fact, I sure. saw an article today that said this said Big TikTok is YouTube. Yeah. That's what they said. Uh, oh, yeah, by the <laughs> way, that's a good point because the one thing YouTube is also viral in its own way. And I, I mean, I watch a ton of YouTube personally, but I will say yeah. in the same way that we read a lot less than we used to, even our attention span for watching video content has gone down and down and down. And so when you think about a 22 minute sitcom versus a what were you saying? A 60 second or however long these things can be. I mean, that's pretty much where we're trending, isn't it? It's like the yeah. soundbite version of a video, basically. Um, it's quibby if it worked. <laughs> yes, <Yeah>. if it worked. <laughs> See, that reference isn't going to mean anything to anyone in about three months. I know. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Oh, Lord. But yeah, right. Oh. Yeah. No, so I I think they're in the I mean they're in the boardroom. Sacha, Amy, Phil Spencer, they're all talking, right? And they're like, okay, here's the list of pros, here's the list of cons. You know what? They're both kind of equal. So Let's I'm just going to make a until Friday. I, I, I think they're in team presentation mode or whatever it's called. I don't think they're actually in a room. <laughs> okay, but, yeah, uh, but I'm saying Fair. I think the calculus changed dramatically on Friday. In fact, Microsoft so. quickly stepped back. Note. Yeah. And they step know, back based on one sentence day. in the middle of a conversation on Air Force One. And they said, whoa, yeah. you know, oh, we are yeah. so sorry we're dealing with this clown. Well, I think, yeah. by the way, everyone who's dealt with this person has had that experience. So, like, wait a minute, that's how he makes decisions? Yeah. Like, yeah. I spend more time picking a, an orange in the supermarket. Yeah. What, are we, like, what are we talking about here? I mean, it's crazy. I'm going to predict, yeah. A, the president is not going to ban TikTok. Any more? I mean, this is all saber yeah. rattling. This is all his, in theory, how he negotiates. That's right. not really on the table. It would be well because there are actual people behind the scenes who start scrambling to say, "Do we actually have the uh, legal right to do this? Yeah. We don't. How okay. we do it? Executive uh, order? You know how <laughs> long that's going to be in court? And then uh, B, I think Microsoft's going to, if if that doesn't happen, it's going to step away. I think they would like to look as, like a savior. They would love to have the next YouTube, but boy, you don't want to look like you're in cahoots with the mob, strong arming a Chinese company. That's going to kill their. Plus, that's going to kill is, their re relationship with China forever. Right. This also cuts yeah. the heart of the whole antitrust problem, right? So everyone knows, you know, when we talk about monopolies, it's okay to have a monopoly. Is you don't, you know, the problem is when you have a monopoly, you have to behave differently, et cetera, et cetera. One of the other problems with monopolies is if you gain that monopoly illegally. So if Microsoft actually had a hit with this thing, that this would always be the stain at the beginning of it. Well, yeah. you know, it's how did you get it again? Yeah. Did, they they were looking for a buyer and you bought it? No, not exactly. I see. You stole it from them? Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Uh, so is it can you know, can another very American company step in and make a counter bid? A very American company. You know how Trump have, said if it's not Microsoft, it's some very oh. it's going to be some other very American company. Oh my well, Lord. Amazon would be an obvious choice. You're right about Google as well. Is a good choice. Google. 
Well, I don't, I don't Google. Know, Google. Trump's Google. never going to let Amazon get it because he sees Amazon as right. the Washington Jeff Post. Bezos. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm, glad, I'm glad these decisions are all being made logically. Um, notice that yeah. Microsoft was not invited to testify last right. week. He, they were one of the big five yeah. that wasn't there. Well, left out. Yep. Yeah. And I think they're, that that's telling. They're bigger than four of those companies. Yeah. <laughs> like, which is I think, amazing. I think that that shows you yeah. that the sun is shining right now on right. Microsoft from Capitol Hill. And this right. is. So they benefited, by the way, with that DOG uh, Jedi contract. That's um, right. I, yeah. Jeff Bezos would argue that was stolen from them. That's and right. Maybe this right. Microsoft, mm -hmm. you know. Oh, We're going to so find out who wins Jedi in the so, next couple uh, weeks. Uh, the, what so. is it? The um, uh, <laughs> the ends justifies the means. Mm -hmm. No, but that's going back. Uh, Bill Gates would have done it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No question. Yeah, but of course, Bill Palmer Gates would have done it. it. I don't know if Microsoft is really run, but it's like a little puppet act, and it's Bill Gates down there when he's... Not spreading COVID, <laughs> he's, you know, controlling Microsoft. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I don't see it happening. Yeah, somebody says, you oh, know. Coke oh. Industries should buy it. Go right along with the towels and the... <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, I, I think... I, I am, I'm not ready to say it's not going to happen. I'm not ready to say I wish they would not yet. do it. I wish I would see any indication they're backing away. I'm really nervous they're going to do it. Okay, I'm and I'm going to say it's never going to happen. Yeah, yeah. Not a million years. Yeah. Really do. Yeah. You know, if they back away, they'll have they'll have people saying, "Good job, Microsoft. That was the right choice." Right? I don't yes. think they'll yep. look like somebody who didn't bail them out. They'll look like you know we wanted to do it, you guys, yeah. but we it's couldn't. Good for business, right? but we can't bring ourselves to. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they're not going to come out right. publicly and say, "Look, we didn't want to be in collusion with the president and right. you know look like a mobster." Right. But we'll all know yeah. that was the reason, and that's great. This week, you're going to see that. I guarantee you. You do? Really? Yeah. <clears throat> it just doesn't make sense. I think they're going to write it out. They're going to write it out. <sighs> that's so dumb. Well, that's just dumb. There's 1.3 billion people in China. That's a big market. It is. So, yep. Uh, Trump's going to be gone in January. Or if he's not, then, well, <laughs> it doesn't matter anyway. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so... What do you gain? I mean, I see this as jewel. It's like you're looking at the Hope Diamond and thinking, can I get around that security? But that's <laughs> kind of dumb. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe maybe they get the deal structured in a way that they get the parts they want and they leave the other parts to investors. How? Or, how? I don't know. I don't how? know how. But maybe they say, you know what? We'll secure. We'll run all the data in Azure, so we'll get that business right. We'll run all. Your, we'll keep all the user data in Azure in our data centers, and then we're going to let the investors in TikTok, who we've heard are also part of this negotiation, they can figure mm -hmm. out the front end and who runs the service. Oh. There may um, be there may be some finagling. That's possible. Right. That's, That's what a, I mean. A, a face-saving yeah. negotiation so that Trump looks yes. like he got something done. Right. Microsoft right. maybe gets a little bit of what they want, and TikTok yep. gets to continue on. You know, yes. Maybe Microsoft says, you know, but all you have to it, do I is mean, run your servers. That's like saying, hey, look, you're, you're going to get off the desert island. You just have to eat your foot. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> you're going to get off. No, you're going to live. It's okay. You're going to see it another day. <laughs> what, if, what about this scenario? TikTok does a deal. We're going to run all, any data coming out of the U.S. goes to Azure in the U.S. Mm -hmm. and yep. nowhere else. <clears throat> we don't see it. No one sees it. We still own it, but no one sees it. Yep. Everyone mm -hmm. saves face. Microsoft gets a little win, not a big win. What about that? What does it mean, though, to store data in the United States and not see it and use it? I mean, I, I don't... Uh, I know. I, well, isn't that the fear that they're the data is sent? It's which is not, but they, oh yeah, no, I, I get it. Yeah. It's going to be I, the I get Chinese fear, government. What, what, the president Xi knocks on the door and says, "Hey, let me see what Leo Laporte's been TikToking lately." Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. can't President Xi right. like VPN into the United States? I don't, like what? Well, he's talking? probably <laughs> got he's probably got people sitting on all of the servers. I don't know. I don't know. I just I don't know yeah. how. I know. I don't know how you can separate it really. To be to be fair, but I I just think I don't think they're going to totally totally step away because this has been going on for weeks. Like they, yeah. they've they've got some idea and some plan, they do. That's for sure. Yeah, that's right. Wow, I just yeah. screwed up. I, I, I'm trying to th I'm trying to see the upside, yeah. and I just I know. There's I I think there's a lot of publicity downside <clears throat> to this. Um, but if you're Microsoft and you're looking at the prize, the prize is the data and the and the AI and the algorithm and the 
the graph, all those things. They must just be like so tantalizing. It's like we want that. Okay, we're gonna we gotta figure out how to make it look good that we're okay, taking but, it. I mean, <laughs> I just still don't get that. I really just don't get this. They don't need to do that. Why, Microsoft? Why? I know. Yeah. Well, because Bing at Bing is such a tiny percentage of the search market compared they want to that Google. Data. Yeah. They want that data. They, they need it. They need it to it feed bad. all this AI work they're yeah. doing. Like data sets need to be bigger and bigger and bigger. Where do you get the consumer data set if you don't have consumer customers, right? They don't have a lot of consumer customers, yeah, except no, the Xbox. The data, the data thing is the one thing that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> but I just, you but know, I still I, don't, I've been thinking this yeah. about this a long time. I There is no problem with TikTok. <laughs> That there's sure. nothing that needs to be solved with TikTok right now. <laughs> and this is uh, all manufactured. Like much of what right. comes out of the White House, it's all manufactured for the base. Mm -hmm. And, sure. uh, you know, along with the Chinese virus, we got the Chinese virus videos, you know, the viral videos. Mm -hmm. And I, yep. I just don't, I, I've been thinking long and hard about it. You can maybe make a case with Huawei and 5G. Mm -hmm. But there's no reason Maybe. why Huawei phones, the number one phones in the world, are not sold in the United States. That's just petty yeah. xenophobia. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I think this is more of the same. I agree. Uh, but, and then if that's the case, Microsoft really looks like an opportunist here. Well, that, <laughs> like, but that's yeah. exactly right. That's, thank you. That, but that's, that's yeah. literally the heart of my <laughs> problem, problem with this. Like, yeah. Yeah. you are colluding with that. Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're so congratulations yeah. on your thirty billion dollar purchase. Wow, you know, wow. Okay, I wow. just—it's huge, huge mistake. See, that wasn't a bad rant, Mary Jo. No, it wasn't. We Nothing. didn't even need the gong. We were all we in agreement. Need. We all gonged each other. You know what? We all should. We should place bets on when when you think the deal will be scuttled because you're way more like aggressive on this being scuttled this week than we are. I mean, it's already Wednesday. Mm -hmm. I, All right, I Biden, sort of feel like two more days. Yeah, it's a little hard to do it this week, but maybe. But next I almost week. feel like Biden they need week. to announce something this week. I think they should do it this week. Other. I think yeah, I honestly, too. I think they're sitting right now. Chris is not listening to us right now. Chris Capasella is in there, and <laughs> he's in the meeting. There, he's in the meeting. <laughs> no, no, I wish Chris were listening. On, first of all, he's on his uh, Peloton. <laughs> he's got us on one screen. He's got the senior leadership team on the other. You know, <laughs> feel the burn, Chris. Feel the burn. <laughs> How do you like your duo, Mary Jo? You can finally talk about it. I know, I know. So my review was very similar to a Everybody lot of the other else's. reviews yes. that I saw, yeah. which was the hardware is amazing. The software, not quite so much. Yeah. Yeah. They uh, um, pushed out a yeah. pretty big update that the minute I got yeah. mine out of the box, and I'm sure yeah. the reviewers got theirs too. Well, you know, you know, when we got that update, so here's a little inside story on that. We, we were supposed to get that update on September 10th, the day the reviews came out. And I think they thought better of that because they were like, wait, we better give them this update to stabilize things before yeah. they do their reviews, right? right? So yeah. we get it a week ahead, which oh, was good. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, um, you know, I, what do you think? I agree with you. Beautiful <laughs> hardware. Yep. In fact, it makes me more, even more interested in the Neo. Because yeah. the Neo will be a big version <laughs> of this running Windows uh, 10X, 10X. Yeah. with a keyboard. Because that's one of my complaints about this is the the form factor, which is really like a little book, cute little book, yeah. does not lend itself well to typing. So you either have to put it down, fold so, it up, and it doesn't really, <laughs> the accelerometer is kind of imperfect. But, you know, that's true on what all would the phones. What would the keyboard look like? Like, in which orientation do you see using it with a keyboard? Well, if you, okay, so... There's a couple of things you can do. You know, if mm -hmm. if you do it like like you would do it normally on a phone, you'll probably fold it over. But then you have a okay. weird three by yeah. two no, aspect it, but, ratio. But phone. if you could open that thing and have it be flat, and maybe you had like a Bluetooth keyboard or something that had like a little slot that, in that'd it, that'd so be okay. Sit in their angle. That's why the right, Neo right? is interest. That's kind of what the Neo is going to yeah. do, right? You and also then, can type this way, like put it yeah. vertically but, and yeah. have the keyboard. Yeah. This be is the where bottom. the software gets funky. It does because. <laughs> And actually, Lou M.M., who works for Microsoft, and he's been dogfooding this for a lot longer than me, said the accelerometer works better if it's flat. Mm. So you do the flip-flop, the Fosbury mm -hmm. flop. Oop, there you go. And it did it, right? And now yeah. you slightly close it, put it down yeah. delicately so it doesn't flip back. And now I wish yep. I... Can you give me an over-the-shoulder uh, shot? Uh, 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 
John or, or Aunt, somebody, because I want to show what it looks like. This is actually very usable. It's a bigger keyboard than you would so normally have. So it's a mini, yeah. it's uh, smaller than a Surface Go. It is. Go. Yep. <laughs> it's a Surface well, Go Junior. So you also can use it in, in landscape mode with the keyboard spanning across both screens or on one screen or the other. So if you want to type one fingered on one screen or the other while it's open, which I could not master to save my life. Yeah, the, um, this, is yeah. No way to, this is no way to type. And then no. to get yeah. it to dual screen. That's what screen, I was thinking about. Get it to yeah. dual yeah. screen. You, um, oops, unlock. Oh, no, I just launched these. That's, this is the yeah. problem with it. It's a little finicky yep. about the touches. You drag it. Let's see. Open one note, <laughs> drag it up, and then drag it over. And when both there screens are. are lit, now it's dual screen. And then now, yep. so I have the one note stuff on the left. Yep. And Outlook yep. works this way, too. And That's actually not, that ain't bad. Yeah, no, but what do you, I mean, bad. how often do you need that? <laughs> you know exactly. what I mean? Exactly. Well, yep. and also it's fatiguing because <laughs> you really do kind of have to hold it like this, like an open book. Yeah. And that's yeah. kind of fatiguing. It is. Okay. I'm so glad to hear you say that because yeah. I, I didn't put that in my review because I was like, oh, everyone's going to say, oh, she's got a weak wrist. She no, can't no, hold no. this thing up. But oh. it's a half a pound plus the bumper, right? And you're holding this thing. And after a while, right. my hand was like, oh. But here, here's the thing <laughs> I think everyone natural, It's knows. not a natural position. The two screens, though, did you start painting or become creative in any way? No. Was there a... <laughs> you know, start baking again, more things. I yeah, get yeah, a yeah. shot of it, so I can't really show you. But the groups, the app groups, really are cool. In fact, I'll be honest with you: if it weren't fourteen hundred dollars, I would say this is the best chess wallet I've ever had. I have my chess book here on the Kindle. I have my chess <laughs> set here, my board, my analysis, my Stockfish. Yeah. This is a great. So this is an example of the dual use, yeah. where you have two apps open at once, and actually. This is a great way, uh, YouTube TV and, uh, I don't know, Twitter. You could have open YouTube TV and Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's actually, I have YouTube TV and uh, Edge. And so that's kind of nice. And it's actually great for watching TV um, yeah. because I you can I just couldn't figure it. out. I couldn't figure out use cases for the two apps side by side. Like you hear that and you're like, oh yeah, cool. And then you're like, okay, what two apps would I put side by side that I need to look at at the exact same time? See, isn't yep. that cute? The TV's like this, and it's sitting like a Smurfus. Yeah. And I got the yeah. website here, so I could have Twitter open here, and I could be tweeting and TV. Yeah. And Remember, hey, this is kind thing. of short. This was short lived, but for a little while on TV, they were, they used to promote these things called two screen experiences. Right. Like you'd watch The Walking Dead in season two or three, mm -hmm. and you're like, you know, get your uh, get your laptop ready. You know, and because yeah. so you'd I have like some that. extra thing, like a chat window or something, and then you'd have TV, obviously, a new TV screen. Actually, yeah. do so that. it sounds like that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so part of the reason I think people didn't like the software is it's just not traditional Android. So yeah, it's disconcerting because some of the gestures, for instance, normally this would be return to home swiping up, and it isn't. Just tapping. It took me a while to figure out. Or you just tap the bottom to return mm -hmm. to home. There, I got my picture in picture. Um, so, so they've changed the gestures a little bit. Uh, so, also, you know, you can turn off gestures, as I'm sure you figured out. Well, Android I do gestures. have the, it's funny because I have gestures turned off, but I still have the back button and the home, and the recent spot. Yeah, that's what I wanted. I wanted the back button. Yeah, you need it. <laughs> you need it yeah. because it's but very it hard to get to recents. That. Yeah, but, it well, ships without that on. And so then you're kind of like, I'm like totally without an orientation or a start place, right? You're like, what do I do? Right. Hey I'm engineers! So sad I didn't get one of these. Engineers, can I get some help here? Can you please put an over-the-shoulder? I'm sorry, I have to do this. <laughs> My big no, mistake I think it's good. when I set up it. this network was to let anybody else be involved. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sending you all home. Um, oh man! So now I don't even remember what we were talking about now. Um, no, the whole idea of turning off just Android gestures. Oh yeah, I have them here um, and. Going back to the three button you navigation, that. that helps a lot. Because the gestures are different. Jeez. The other thing, and yeah. this is minor, but for the longest time I was trying to get to the settings by hitting this button, this gear button. Right. Oh no, that's the, the that's the brightness that's the bright. button. <laughs> Look yeah. how close yeah. that looks to the gear button. I that's know. just a Microsoft thing. You could fix that, Microsoft. Maybe you should. Um yeah. so but I think I have gestures. Uh let me just see. I think I have it. Uh, gestures. If you have the home button, oh and the back no, I button. turned on three button navigation. See, if yeah, you turn on better. gesture navigation, 
No. It's not usable because it's not. Look what happened. <laughs> I don't know why all these things just opened. Yep. It's crazy. <laughs> Go away. So that's the this other thing, problem. And now it's dead, like it's by possessed. the way. Possessed. Yeah, it's possessed. Now that's yeah. software. They could fix that. Yeah, I think they can fix it. With See, it's software. not doing Oh, I wait think. a minute. Now I'm in gesture mode. Never mind. So that's back to the gesture. Okay. So maybe I can get used to that. Mm. Yeah, because there's recent <laughs> But for me, the problem with the gestures was first, if you've never used Android gestures, you yeah. have to learn that. And then Microsoft layers its own gestures on That's top of problem. Android gestures. It's non standard. Right. Yeah. So that is a little guys, bit of a problem. I'm sorry. I like this. You though. Look, Don't you if like If you look this? at how elegant the, the Galaxy Z Fold 2 thing is, I mean, I, this just looks unready. You know? It I just like looks the, like they should I like it the too launcher. Soon. The Love launcher the launcher. Normally I switch my launcher. All your recent docs but isn't this good stuff? here like this? Yeah. yeah. And this That's is really customizable. Good. This is the left side. I and like so that, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. You know, it's little things like the way the uh, icons here kind of get get all get oh whoop, get together and then whoop spread apart. They move all by like I never could figure out why do they show up on one side or the other, right? Like especially <laughs> trying to open the camera, right? Well, the camera's terrible. If, okay, excuse the me. The camera this always opens to selfie first. Yeah. Unless and then, then, you open the camera on the left. Th oh really? <laughs> oh, I didn't know Try that. that. Okay. Yep. <laughs> so, but how do I get it to the left? Exactly. Right. So you <laughs> okay. have to fold your, I'll fold do it, it this over. way. Okay. <laughs> Selfie, see, but then, no, 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 but that's what's supposed to happen. See, then when you do this, yeah. yep. this thing but is it also doesn't. the double you tap to switch instead. screens is dumb. I know. Yeah. I Guys, I'm sorry. I'm, I was it's, completely it's wrong. Haunted. This thing's awesome. I'm sorry I ever complained about it. <laughs> <clears throat> no, I, but it makes, I don't want to make this sound so negative. It's, I actually no. like it. You know, I, I like the concepts and I like that they're I, trying something new, but it, they came uh, out with this so early. Like it's not ready to sell to people. I don't feel like. Yeah. I feel like they there rushed it. There you go. You got it. So now <laughs> that did it and may turn it into a, a, a camera, but this is a potato camera. And that's the other problem is it's not, it is. it's not a good camera, but yeah. I think the really, and now I understand why they said it's not a phone. It isn't. It's a little computer. <laughs> and honestly, nobody should buy this unless they can afford to have this and a phone. Yeah, that's the real yes. problem. This couldn't you wouldn't want this for your standalone phone. For instance, when you close it, there's no indication that you have yeah. a notification nope. at all. Nope. There's yeah. no information. You have to do the peak mode. So you have to mode. go in here. <laughs> and I, so. to be fair, this fingerprint works great. That's a good choice. It does. Yep. Um, that's, it's a separate from the uh, on off switch, but it works great. I just, it's such a beautiful piece of hardware. I'm actually glad I own it. It was expensive. I had to buy it, but, yeah. uh, I'm kind of glad I own it. I think it's a really elegantly designed. I think it is a tablet and the way I primarily use it is a tablet. I have yet to really use it in this, this mode where you, whoops. Yeah, where you have it, uh, two two yes, two things to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, but I feel like in that view, I mean, it here's could make the reason. Sense. Look at that. <clears throat> see, yeah, see. So you you guys are wearing masks, but if I scroll it, so <laughs> the screen thinks there's something where the hinge is. Yeah. Now, yes, now you're in the witness right. protection oh, that is, program. That is kind of strange. Okay. Yeah. Every app should yeah. say, "Oh no, there's I two screens." I bet they did that on purpose. Why? Because they don't want an, an offset. Like maybe it would be horrible for it would video. Be offset. But there's things like when I do my crossword puzzles, and this would should be in theory a perfect crossword puzzle machine. Yeah. But you can't do it that way because you're missing a whole a whole row of yep. en of entries, and there's no scrolling. And there's in no this. way you can't mm -hmm. scroll. Yep. 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 Yeah. So that's a, huge that's a failure. Um, now Google. Yeah, Maps, they're counting on developers to fix their apps. For this. But 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 if big... Microsoft doesn't, why would Wait, the developer? See what's happening right, right there. Like you're holding it the thing sideways. It doesn't rotate by itself. It does that I lot. mean, it's just. Uh, it works better if it's flat like this, and then you can tent, tent it. You that, know, it, it would work tip. great if it was a single screen mini tablet. But <laughs> yeah, remember, just... a lot of phones, including my iPhone, the accelerometer is wonky. Hmm. This this is never. This is. You'd think this would work better. On all See, phones. I find accelerometers are often too touchy. Not right. And so it's going whoop, whoop, whoop. Yeah. 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 So maybe that's a tunable right. feature. Yeah. But I mean, I think if you're using Teams or Skype in this yes. mode, it's great. Teams Teams is the Actually, perfect like app this for this phone. Because you'd want it the is. camera. Yeah. 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 Okay. I feel like if you have a meeting on one side and you have to look at a document they're talking about in the meeting, there's your perfect, perfect yeah, yeah. use case for this. And right? that's why the Neo is getting exciting for me. 
Let's see. Actually, and I have, you know, I turned, there's a little bug. I'm not sure if it's in the Kindle app or not, but I turned off um, the, the cool page turn in Kindle because it was jumping pages and that wasn't good. <laughs> so I have to, let me turn it back on though. Look, see? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, yep. Yeah, it's yeah, not good. Yeah. Supposedly good. Google Maps has been updated now. Let me let me just see out of curiosity to to understand the dual screen somehow. But uh, you know, I don't know. Where's where's maps? M A B C D E F G. So if mm-hmm. I do this, let's see. No, see, still like mm-hmm. I've made work disappear. Oh, you can't it's so bright. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Let me turn down the brightness. This time I won't use that gear. I'll use this gear. <laughs> All right. Now you can see it. So you can see, uh, you know, stuff still hiding in the gap. Yep. Um, you got to move things around. To but see it's nice to have a map at this size. I mean. Yeah, it is. You know, I, yep. I have to remember now. Let's see. What else was I going to show you? Well, let me sh- The Kindle is so awesome. If, the Kindle app's cool. If you could just say, look, I just wanted a $1,400 Kindle. <laughs> and and I'm really happy now. This this would yep. be a great choice if yep. you if you have that much money to burn. Where's the settings? You know, oh, I like I, I always talk about I only want to carry two devices and a lot of times I do carry a Kindle laptop and a phone. So this would replace the Kindle yeah. if it could replace my what phone, great, but it can't. What a great reading <laughs> experience. This actually looks like a book. Yep. You know? I, Wait, but why does that? Why is that important? I, I books are old fashioned. I know. You know. Yeah. You know, books are the way we used to do. This things. is what I want on the airplane, but I don't want it I, to be my well, phone. I want it to be my little mini bitty computer. Yeah. But this, I'm gonna. This will be great. Someday I'll fly again, and this will be great to take on the airplane to watch TV, to read books, to do that dual screen thing for things like you know chess study. It's great, but you still need a phone for notifications and stuff like that. Because also because this. This yeah. <laughs> is dopey. This is just not. Yeah, you got to use it with I'll earbuds. It ear. It's weird yeah. otherwise. Yeah. <laughs> or the speaker, if you if there's nobody yeah, around. Or the speaker. And it doesn't yeah. have a great speaker. It's a mono speaker, but it's good enough for a phone call. I actually yeah. been listening to books on it, which is fine. Mm-hmm. So, I, you know, it's not a complete failure, and I and I and I really don't want people to take the negative reviews as like, oh, they should just kill this. Right. I, I don't would, think they're going to. I, the rumor is they're already building version two for next year. Yeah. So, yeah. And yeah. I, presumably yeah, yeah. the Duo 2 will be even better. <laughs> I would hope so. <laughs> <laughs> that seems like the bar. Just, it's, it's beautiful hardware. It really, it really is. is. Great. The hardware is amazing. It is. They need a better camera. But again, I don't think anybody would want this as their sole phone. This is your work phone, maybe. Right? Mm-hmm. Something like that. I want it to be a device I can take to an office and plug into a monitor and have it be my, like, oh, work yeah. computer. Is this the Samsung continuing? does this. What is wrong with you I two? The, I know. Yeah, but that's Samsung, janky. Yeah, Samsung does it, but Samsung phones are terrible <laughs> because of the Samsung ecosystem. Right. Like, I don't want I don't, all the this stuff This is a Samsung very Microsoft. I don't want all that. Paul, do you have the Fold? No. Are you going to no. get the fold? Nope. It's too expensive. Yeah. Two thousand dollars. Yeah. I would. Yikes. I wish I. I wish I could <laughs> afford it, but I, there's a lot of other stuff I have to get, and this yeah. is an expensive quarter, and we don't have a lot of money, yeah. so I can't. See, now it's doing the thing that really bugs me, which is it's it's just not responding. Oh, now it responded like later. Yeah. So the it's slow laggy. response is a problem. Yeah. But I do, I love this this idea, and now I can show you. I mean, first I have to flatten it, then I have to do that. This is great. <laughs> it's great to then, then, then I have I, to bang it three times <laughs> on the desk. Uh, just come as, on, baby. As a come on, baby. everyone watching, Leo actually knows a thing or two about tech. Come on, baby. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. I know you can do it. There. I broke it, so... Yeah. But it's that's a nice way to watch TV is in the little with a little Smurfist uh, book. Because that's what this is. It's a little Smurfist laptop, and I do, I do think, I do think that this the Smurfist uh, Neo will be great. <laughs> Jeez, based on no. this, yes, because it'll be bigger. Why? It'll have a keyboard that slides out. It'll be this because this is a really interesting form factor. Well, let me just throw like one idea out here. They they thought this was good enough to ship in its current form. 
they delayed the Surface Neo because the software wasn't ready. Right. Are you kidding right. me? Right. Like this is what they decided to ship. Can you even imagine how terrible Windows 10X must be right now? Uh, I'm just no. I'm, I, am I uh, <laughs> the only one seeing this? We've buried <laughs> the biggest story. <laughs> Of the week. Yeah. Halo 3 ODST is out this week. For, yes. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. You meant. <laughs> I meant Bethesda, baby. Yeah. Um, this is, I mean, somebody was pointing out, I think it was in Forbes, they said, you know, it's not like Sony could do this. <laughs> they don't even, they don't, they don't, only a company with deep pockets could pay seven and a half billion dollars to yeah. acquire a game company. The same price I, they paid for GitHub, by the way. Wow. About the same yeah. as Nokia <laughs> as well. And it's just yeah, we measure right, things in Nokia. Right. We'll just say yeah. that Microsoft is acquiring Bethesda for one Nokia. That's yeah. kind of amazing. Mm -hmm. I'm a little more bullish on this, though, than I was on the Nokia purchase. I think this is well, going to be I, good. Right? Yeah, sure. I mean, I I, uh, I think this makes a ton more sense than TikTok. Yeah. Just throw that out yeah. there. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. I is, even and, think it makes more sense than that. Yeah. <laughs> this also kind of sends a message about how serious they are about this market because I think a lot of people, and, and I've, I've certainly gone on this road in the past, have said that, you know, maybe they should spin off Xbox. This doesn't necessarily make any sense. And then as we move into the cloud era and cloud-based gaming, you kind of see how Microsoft might want to yeah. stick with it. But the big dig against Xbox has been game studios, exclusive games, and so forth. And I think, I, I don't remember the exact numbers, but Sony is somewhere 13 or 14 and Microsoft has 21, 22, something like that. I mean... They have more game studios than Sony does now. So wow, and these are some these are some great games. So Bethesda is, of course, best known. Well, I don't know. I like the Elder Scrolls. That's Skyrim. Mm -hmm. um, right, right. I'm a big fan of that. They also do Doom. Yep. They so do. they own all the id stuff, right? So it's everything that all the id stuff. Uh, it, Commander yep. Keen. Nice. Yeah, going back, you know, Quake, <laughs> um, all the Quake games, all the Doom games. Guys, wait, um, what about Wolfenstein? Wolfenstein. Yeah, Wolfenstein. The, the well, game actually, for beer drinkers. Good, yeah. That's, That's the only reason the I game. care about that. The Stein. <laughs> okay. Yeah. The Stein. It's not it. what you think it is. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, no? <laughs> it's, it's turned into, well, um, it's it's kind of, well, they've, it's been rejiggered uh, several times. It's a kind of a modern shooter now, but it's. Uh, yeah, the, it was the first so, game I felt, practically the first game I fell in love with on an Apple II. Yeah. When they had, they didn't oh, even the have a sound one, chip. Castle yeah. Wolfenstein. Castle yeah, Wolfenstein. Yeah. They didn't even have a sound right. chip, so all the Nazis were going. <laughs> right. <laughs> But I for me so, it was Wolfenstein 3D. Yeah. And then it was so then when it this turned into uh, Monday, mein Lieben. Can I just <laughs> you know mein Lieben. can I just say when I saw this announced Monday, I had to wait to write it because I was like, who is Bethesda Softworks? Never heard right. of them. Right. Oh, and Ever. let's not forget Fallout. Another Fallout. Fallout. Another one I <laughs> love. <laughs> love Fallout. Yep. So this they have this is a this is a studio with some real classic titles the i the ip yeah. they bought alone is probably worth the seven and a half billion yeah and they're an ongoing concern right these aren't games like retro games from the past necessarily these are you know new new fallout 76 is what came out last year or whatever i mean yeah it's good it's um, fun uh, the new doom is obviously done really mm -hmm. well um they they're yeah it's a big deal that's good what did microsoft pay for minecraft like half that right two something yeah. two point third of that maybe okay i thought mm -hmm. So, so I'm right, Mary Jo. I'm remember. actually. Uh, I'm they actually bought Zenimax, that. right, which is the parent company yeah. of Bethesda. So mm. to be perfectly accurate, but nobody knows who Zenimax is. But <laughs> two point five soft, billion Bethesda Softworks, either for that matter. But um, Mary Jo. <laughs> yes. I think some of us do. I know some people do. It's a venerated I, name, actually. I had never heard of it. Yeah. I'm not kidding. Like I was, I said to people, I've never heard of it. And they're like, come on, you've played Skyrim. I'm like, no, I haven't. Oh, Skyrim's <laughs> no, that, awesome. That's a silly thing to say. But <laughs> no, I can't see uh, Mary Jo playing Skyrim, but it is a beautiful game. I don't game. even know what it is, but okay. Yeah. Anyway, you know, I covered it though, because it's an acquisition and it's a big one, right? And yeah. I cover Microsoft, so I have to know about it. Think of the mashups. Somebody's well, in the chat room saying, think, think I can't the, wait for Minecraft Doom. But now that it's a, well, that, but that way, that probably exists. That has to exist, right? Wolf, to exist. Wolfenstein <laughs> Minecraft. Yeah. Yeah. So the bigger deal, though, is that now, because they're a Microsoft Studio studio, these new games, as they come out, will be made available on Xbox Game Pass day and date, right? 
So this is really that's huge uh, to me. Part of that cloud slash subscription yeah. push that Microsoft has just started, and um, yeah, I mean this is we're getting to the point for a gamer where. Xbox Game Pass might be getting into no-brainer territory, you know. Smart. Chat room's having fun coming up with mashups. Pit Fallout <laughs> will be fun. Uh, he's, uh, Knox Harrington says, in the new Halo, Master Chief will be sidelined by an arrow to the knee. That's something. <laughs> if Mary Jo doesn't know the name Bethesda, she's definitely so, not going to get that. <laughs> you know what? But I know that reference now because someone used it on oh, me on Twitter. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's classic Skyrim line. <laughs> um, so, no, I think there's a, there's, this is really, this is going to be very interesting. And by the way, it makes me cry even more that I wasn't able to get the $35 Microsoft Xbox Series X deal. Oh yeah, you couldn't get it, huh? The bots beat we're gonna, me. We're going to we're going to get to that because yeah. I also yeah, got beat and very, I'm not happy. Very oh, frustrating. Oh, really? Wow. Oh, those yeah, bots. This is a a failure of Azure scalability wow. if there's ever been one. I oh. what a what a fiasco. We'll that save was. that though. Yeah. That's, that's cuz yeah, yeah. I mean, you want to spend some time with it. So. Yeah. Sure. Uh, we we will talk about that. So, what does this tell you about Microsoft's ambitions in in gaming and Xbox? And how does this fit yeah. in with there are other ambitions in, with the cloud and things like that. I mean, you know what? I, Microsoft is in a weird place right now because they are releasing consoles and those aren't really the primary focus on the future for them, right? And and they obviously they want to sell consoles. But hardware is uh, an expensive business to be in. It, it typically loses money. They're looking for this, you know, the razor blades here in this case, you know, the in, in the back of the day it was games and now it's game subscription services to kind of float those customers and make them make sense financially. So what this is doing is stocking up that stable that they have of games that are available via Xbox Game Pass and uh, cloud streaming. And it just makes this entire ecosystem better for gamers. It makes it more of a destination to go to. Um, Sony is doing the same thing they've always done, which, by the way, has worked for sure. I mean, I'm not, um, not dumping on that, but they want you to buy an expensive new console and they want you to buy games, you know. And Sony, uh, Microsoft is saying, you don't have to buy a console. You can play games almost anywhere. It's only a few places now, but eventually, obviously, anywhere. What we want you to do is subscribe to this service. And you'll be able to play. And, you know, depending on the capabilities of the system you're using, you'll, you'll have, uh, you know, better experiences as you kind of go up the chain. But um, this stuff works basically everywhere. Uh, the Microsoft Studio games certainly do. So I think that's cool. Plus, you know, obviously, they're cross-platform already. These guys uh, have PC games that they probably sell through Steam. They have... PlayStation games they sell through the, uh, the PlayStation Store. That's not going to change, right? But, um, you know, if you have it with the subscription and stuff comes out, DLC for a game, a new game, whatever, you're just going to get that. You know, and I, like I said, it's not quite no-brainer depending on the types of games you want to play. But uh, before this acquisition, there were 167 games, I think it was, and Game Pass is another 50-plus coming from EA Play. And then whatever the stable is of uh, Bethesda games, it's got to be several dozens of games you know so it's definitely going to go over 200 it's it's it just tells me they're really they're serious about gaming and if i know that's a silly thing to say on the verge of a console launch but we've been we not we you know me specifically but we as a community maybe have been doubting microsoft's seriousness in this market for years you know and they've lost each generation so far with the consoles yeah, but what is lo lost you know only means that they didn't sell as many right Yes, <laughs> but I suspect it also <laughs> means they made zero money. Okay. Like, I mean, okay. Xbox as a business has not been profitable for Microsoft. Well, overall. that's why I'm wondering why they're spending seven and a half billion dollars for a money losing business. Because now gaming is going to the cloud, and all of a sudden, there's yeah. this wonderful convergence with Microsoft's key, one of Microsoft's key uh, strengths. Yes, um, they are one of the few companies. Although you know, again, the <laughs> the Xbox Series X buying experience. Suggest otherwise, but um, that has the uh, capacity and the infrastructure and and the will, right, to do yeah. this kind of thing. They're going to do it for other companies. You know, back when there was an announcement where Sony was partnering with Microsoft to bring some future game service to Azure, my thought was, like, this could be a big chunk of what is the future of the Xbox business. Uh, you know, I, they may not brand it that way, but um, uh, providing game uh, hosting services for other companies like Activision or uh, well, EA is on Microsoft now, but, you know, there could be other big game publishing studios that want to do this kind of thing as well. 
uh, Nintendo would be an obvious choice as well, right? The other console maker. Um, they don't have any expertise or capability with regards to cloud computing at all. They can't even, they can barely release mobile games. <laughs> so they would be an ideal choice to come to Azure. Or you, you know what's computer. crazy to think about? Remember just a few years ago, we were all speculating if Microsoft was going to sell off the Xbox division. Do you remember yeah, this? Right. Yeah, of course. Like, everybody was like, they're not but, really yeah. into gaming. Like, it doesn't fit with the rest of the company. And now look what's happening, right? It's like <laughs> well, 180 degree so change. They make these big bets, right? So people forget that Xbox really started before the original Xbox, before it was called Xbox, because they were working with mm -hmm. uh, Sega on the, I must have the Genesis, the uh, Dreamcast. And there was a Windows CE environment in there, and that was going to be a one way that people could make games, and no one ever did or whatever. But I think that taught Microsoft that they needed to kind of control the environment. And the first Xbox was basically a PC. It was kind of technically successful. It, you know, it didn't win the market or whatever, but it did well unit sales-wise. Um, mm -hmm. Xbox 360 was the big push. They were going to be like Apple, beautiful white device, uh, super sleek and modern. Mm -hmm. Huge reliability problems, scuttled that, uh, you know, billion plus, whatever it was on the warranty uh, cost that they just kind of covered for everybody. I said, I don't remember the numbers anymore, but between three Xboxes, I think I got them fixed for the Red Ring of Death eight times, something oh, like that. Can I you believe that. Yeah. Xbox is going back. <laughs> yep. That was, was a $3 billion write off, I seem to remember, something yeah. like that. So huge. Right? Yeah, so yeah. huge. Yeah. So, and then the <laughs> Xbox One, you know, I think I talk about. You know the 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 starting gun goes off and you fall you fall right in your face. I mean they just they blew it mm -hmm. from day one, which is too bad because the original Xbox One was kind of a clunker. It's up behind me there. It's a tank, but uh, Xbox One S and then the X especially those are really elegant devices. They're powerful. Um, now they're well now they're gone, but they got really inexpensive. I mean, and then Microsoft did the whole rejiggering of their strategy, you know, because they had to. But it turned into I think Xbox has turned into something wonderful for gamers. <laughs> And uh, it's, you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens. But I, I think they're going to do pretty well. Um, I was torn the between the PlayStation years. 5 and an Xbox, but I think the acquisition of Bethesda. Wow, really? Well, I bet I'm bet i not alone either. Because if you're, I'm a yeah. fan of Fallout and and Skyrim. I like the Elder Yeah, product. so I mean, that's so, why the all-access thing is so appealing. Yeah, so you're 35 yeah. bucks a month. You're going to get the console. You own it, right, obviously, after two years. And then you get that whole stable of games. Yeah. And... You know, for some people, that's going to be like they, they. You'll look at that list and say, "Yeah, this is everything I need." Right. You know. Right. Um, and that's that's an amazing value. You know, if you could buy it. Yeah, because we did the. <laughs> if you didn't hear us last <laughs> week or the week before, we did the math, and it's the yeah. Xbox is actually a little bit less expensive. If mm -hmm. you uh, you know you include the the bundle cost for the software. Um, yeah, I think it was forty or sixty bucks less. Yeah, like that, you're, sa you're actually saving yeah. money. You're not paying an interest anyway on the hardware. So that's, right. um, that's a pretty good deal. I mean, I I would buy it outright, but actually, I probably do the game the pass. I tried to do both, but I would do either. But um, yeah, I'll do whatever they'll let me do. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, the other thing that's really interesting about that is obviously I, there's probably I know there's a term for this. Like, there's an ad on TV for a car, and it's super low price. So you go to the dealership, and it's like, oh, that one's already gone. But the look, we have these awesome ones leader. over here. Plus, okay, or you have this notion of like the Apple Watch starts at. 99 yeah. cents, but you want the one yeah. at 600 bucks. Right. You know, so the thing that's cool about the uh, Xbox All Access is that it's such an easy justification to make. You're not going from spending $300 to spending $500. You're going from spending $25 a month to $35 a month, right? Like that difference is like one trip to Dunkin' Donuts to keep beating to death. That's the same example I always use. But it's like at $10 a month is negligible to almost to anyone who would be in the market for buying one of these consoles. So it it makes upgrading to the better one, you know, again, a no brainer to keep reusing things I always say, but um, <laughs> it, it just makes it, you know, an easier thing because when, when I was thinking about paying for these things outright, I'm like, I'll just get an S, you know, yeah. I play on a 1440 P set anyway, who cares? Right. Um, but 10 bucks a month, like, eh, well, yeah. X makes more sense. Yeah. One of the things I look forward to every year, in fact, it just happened, uh, is a visit from Microsoft's chief marketing officer, Chris Capicella. We like to look at the Microsoft holiday ad. They always do something pretty heartwarming. And Chris usually has some interesting things to say, like this. For me, Microsoft Defender and Azure Sentinel, these are two, these are just complete hidden gems. And... Uh, I think the world is starting to wake up to the fact that Microsoft is a serious security provider. 
and we can't do it alone. Like security is not something one company you like with email. Most companies will say, I'm only going to buy one email solution. I'm not going to run Gmail and Office 365. That's kind of goofy. But security is not that way. You know, security, people spend a lot of money on a lot of different solutions. And this is the year, this past year is the year that I think Defender and Sentinel really sort of grew up and came into their own. And we have a lot of customers telling us, my gosh, you've become a much more important security company in our in our world than you were two or three years ago. And I think this one will become a bigger story next year and the year after. And so I wanted to plant the seed, like Microsoft Defender and Azure Sentinel, I think are our two hidden gems that don't get that much attention, but they've become far more important to our customers. And, you know, we don't do a ton on consumer security. We have a bunch of tech built into Windows itself, but when we listen to consumers, you know, they're very worried about their identity. They're very worried about their yeah. documents, uh, their PC getting broken into, et cetera. So I don't think it's just this boring commercial thing that some of your listeners may be like, God, I, I hate that enterprise stuff. I just want to talk about end user stuff. But <laughs> hey, I actually hey, think. Hey. I yeah, no, no, Mary here's Joe, something, Mary Joe, let him talk, let him talk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get as much goodness in here as I can that you know. <laughs> Anyways, um, I think watch, you know, that that's when I put your, um, yeah. I put your eyes on that may, may not be as much on as they are today. I feel, I feel like the changing of the branding around security has made it really confusing. Um, yeah. Like, like when people say Defender, I'm like, wait, are they talking about the thing that I used to know as Defender? Or is this something right. that's been rebranded to Defender? You know, like I, I have to yeah. do all these extra machinations before I can figure You're right. it out. The, the simplest way to think of it is we have rebranded all of our threat protection mm -hmm. to be Defender. Yeah. And so Defender is our threat protection sort of full, full stop. And that we have Defender inside of Microsoft 365. You know, we've got a bunch of sort of Defender products, if you will, mm -hmm. but you should just think Microsoft Defender really comes down to threat protection. Azure Sentinel, as the name tries to imply, Sentinel, someone sort of, mm -hmm. you know, watching over your stuff and being your Sentinel. This really analyzes large volumes of data and it aggregates data from all different types of serv services. Your different applications you're running, hardware you might be running, devices your end users are running. It can run on-prem, you know, it spans on-prem in the cloud, it spans clouds. So uh, it's, it's, you know, in the... S-I-E-M category, yeah. uh, as opposed to Defender, which is really about threat protection. So the name changes are are complicated to keep up with, but I feel like these two are pretty uh, important ones that, have, that we believe will stick over time. And think about Defender as threat protection, and uh, you should think about a, a Sentinel as much more about sort of this massive analyzer of data from all over the place to, mm -hmm. you know, to do that. Uh, seam category, if you will. Mm -hmm. So that's why I call out just those two. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm so way over the, my allotted time. I'm, I uh, <laughs> any last tough ones for me before I go, or should we call it a holiday? <laughs> the Microsoft. Yeah, let's paint. not ruin the holiday. I <laughs> Microsoft paint holiday. Um. No, I, unless you want to drop any new code names or anything, you know, we're here for those. Mary but. Joe's always ready for those. It's <laughs> <laughs> a know, list of things you're not allowed to speak about. Yeah, just so. tell exactly. us what you can't say. That's good. Well, yeah. all, I, all I have to do is read your Twitter feed and then I see all the code names. Yeah. And then, nice. you know, that's how he keeps so up. You know, like <laughs> some of them, not all of them are right, not all of them are wrong. Like, uh, so I, I could just go through your Twitter feed and read it out loud to your readers, but I think they can look at that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, 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 not, nothing I would drop that, you know, I don't read you already writing about. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I would just say, you know, thank you. Obviously, thank you to the three of you have for having the show. For me personally, it has been a little bit of a semblance of normalcy in just a wicked year. And uh, I, I don't mean that to sound too corny, but, you know, it's been a consistent thing that, you know, you can listen into every week. And that's actually been kind of sweet uh, and nice. And you, I think you both do such a wonderful job covering the company and trying to cover a very, very broad, complicated business. Um, so thanks for another year of, of hard work. Kind of amazes us that you listen, oh, to be you. honest with you. I know. <laughs> well, every, every once in a while we'll be talking about something and Leo will say, oh, Chris is probably on his treadmill listening to us. And then you get that kind of 
<laughs> little shutter up the back, like, all right, you can listen to this. It's it's actually walking out in the city as opposed to in the treadmill, okay. but yeah. it's yeah. true. Yeah. And I always laugh nice. when I hear my name. Chris just drove into a ditch. Uh, we better uh, yeah. <laughs> we change the right, subject right. here. Chris Capitelli, Chris, if you're listening, thank you. uh, pay attention to the road. Yeah, um, really. <laughs> so I'm just walking. I'm not driving. I'm just walking. I'll, okay. I will. I will confess that often I I just pretend you're the sole audience member, right. and right. we and we just think about you and what. It's Chris nice to is get together think. with that member once a year and just yeah, you know, kind of see how the year what do you went think? and yeah. <laughs> are there any directions you, you think we should yeah. go in. <laughs> Chris is our first line, front line, back line, every line. Yes. Right. It's really nice Thank to you. have you. Thank you Thank for you. making your and time in this uh, for this. You bet. And I don't know if you know this, but we've opened up our London and Sydney Experience Centers. The flagship stores nice. are opened up as Experience Centers in New York, hopefully, uh, very soon. And so maybe this year we could do, you know, you guys could do a show from one of those one yeah. of those spots. Oh, that'd be again. cool. Yeah. yeah we really nice. something up the world, yeah. you know. Yeah. Cool. Well, take care. Have a happy holiday. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, thank you, Chris. Thank you. All right. I'm going to press bye. the magic button that makes Chris woo, disappear. <laughs> that is really that is really cool. I just love that. <laughs> uh, something new the uh, team works It's like, up. get the hook. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> well, it's been a fun year on Windows Weekly. Of course, Paul Therott and Mary Jo Foley are just the best in the business. Uh, we started the year full of high hopes. We ended it full of COVID-19, but we managed to get all the way through. Uh Maybe not just COVID-19. I might have been full of some other things. Uh, but thanks to the to Richard Campbell. But <laughs> we expect there'll be lots of fun in 2021. And we really hope you will join us. Thanks to all of you for watching the show. I wish you, wish you and listening. I wish you all the happiest of holidays. I hope you get to spend some time with family and friends or just sitting by the virtual fire, enjoying life a little bit. Uh, we'll be back next week with a brand new Windows Weekly episode and plenty more for 2021. Have a great holiday. I'm Leo Laporte. We'll see you next time. <laughs>